I am like, super excited about today. Um, I mean, for lots of reasons. Like I was excited when I first set this up. I was like, hey, I'm going to teach this thing. It's going to be super useful. Um, super excited, even more so because over 100 people said yes, including the calendar invite. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So originally this was super impromptu and it's become a little less, less impromptu. Uh, 100 people RSVPing for the same event will inspire you to clear your morning and do a little extra prep. So I'm excited to share with you a visual model that I've created uh, that basically helps you learn how to earn $10,000 a month through coaching 90 minutes a week. So awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Jake. Good to see you. Hey, Rebecca, Doug. Hey, Sharon. And hey, Natalie. Awesome. More people are coming in. Um, but here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to keep this tight today. Uh, so when I originally planned this, I literally, I mean, it was literally one canceled meeting. I have a meeting in 59 minutes. And so I am going to give you 59 minutes of absolute pure value focus as much as I can. I'm going to teach you the model that I use to teach you how to earn $10,000 a month, group coaching 90 minutes per week. I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. Um, I'm going to give you as much live coaching as I can, but it's a really tight time frame, And there's a lot of people who have said yes, that they're coming. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to drop a, drop a link to my private calendar in the chat. If you already know, you're like, yeah, I want to go deep on this. I want to talk more about this one-on-one. -on -one go ahead and book a call. If you're not sure, that's fine. You can wait and do that later. Um, I, I open up some spot, space on my calendar for the rest of this month because I said, look, if you're really committed to this, I want to help you map out your personalized path. And candidly, this is my core business. And so I hope some of you decide that you want to work with me over the next six months to achieve this. But even if you don't, I hope today is useful to you. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Welcome. Hey, everybody that's still popping in. Uh, all right. So last time I did this a week ago, a couple of you are here. Um, it was uh, my four-year-old decided to FaceTime me every few minutes for about half the call, which was <clears throat> cute at first and then really frustrating because I couldn't figure out how to make it stop ringing. But I figured that out. So I went to the settings and, and, and I, and I uh, first of all, he's entertained now with a different activity, but I also did go into the settings and make sure that uh, he cannot interrupt our meeting unless he literally just beats down the door to my office. So I think we're good. Um, I love him, but he's not why you're here. Uh, that's a different meeting. So here's the goal, right? Earn $10,000 per month, group coaching, 90 minutes a week. Um, and so here's what I'd love to know. Um, for those of you that offer coaching now, actually, just quick poll. Let me know in the chat. Do you currently offer, put put the number one if you do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching or one-on-one -on -one consulting. Put the number two if you currently offer some sort of group coaching offer, even if you also do one-on-one. -on -one. And the number zero, if you don't have any coaching or consulting offers right now. So either one, two, or zero in the chat. Let's just kind of, kind of get a pulse on who's here. Okay, amazing. Thank you. So quite a bit of ones, a couple twos. Um, let's see. Um, all right. Amazing. One and two, one and two, zero. Um, So come on in, welcome, welcome. I see a few more people still coming in. So the question right now is, do you currently offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, or no coaching? So one is one-on-one, -on -one, two is group, zero is none. So it looks like we've got a good mix. We've got a couple, uh, handful of people who have zero. Lots of people do one-on-one, -on -one, a few people who already did uh, group. Amazing. So, all right, let's go ahead and just talk about this because this is the goal, right? Once you get here, once you're earning $10,000 a month, <clears throat> group coaching 90 minutes a week, then you have a phenomenal business. Now, for most of my clients, this ends up being like the core of your business. You probably also want to do books or membership sites or courses or other types of uh, things that naturally add on to this as your core of your business. But when you have this as the core of your business, it is it allows you to fund your lifestyle, buy back your time from either one-on-one -on -one clients uh, or any sort of job that you might have, which is also, I think of that as a different kind of one-on-one -on -one client. Um, and it allows you to buy back your time to do more things. It also allows you to go to work deeply with a handful of people to help them make incredible change in their life, whether you're helping people become healthier, wealthier, or happier. However, that said, this doesn't happen automatically. So there are three things that typically keep someone from achieving this goal. And so I just want to tell you what those three are real quick. This kind of works out neatly that it forms a little bit of a triangle. So um, the first thing here that keeps someone from achieving this goal is they say, man, I just, I don't have a big audience. I have a tiny audience. That could be stopping some, many of you to say like, I just, my audience is big enough. I don't have enough leads or enough people who are interested in this thing. Another thing that stops people is scattered selling. 
And so by that, I mean, it's not exactly clear to someone who's kind of coming into your world, what exactly are you selling? What's the offer? How are you selling it? Do you have a simple way that you bring people into your business? And then the third thing that keeps people stuck is honestly overwhelming ideas. Some people call this the curse of knowledge. You could call this many different things, but it's literally, it's just the, it's the fact that you know a lot about your field of expertise. And when you think, okay, I'm going to work with somebody over the next 60 or 90 days or six months to help them. Oh my gosh, how do I download my five or 10 or 20 years of expertise into this one person over a few weeks? It's not going to happen. And so that, that the overwhelm can keep a lot of people stuck. Um, and so what I would love to know is which one of these is, is true for you. So we'll go ahead and number these, right? So we'll say uh, tiny audience, scattered selling, overwhelming ideas, or for all of the above. Let me know in the chat real quick, which one of these is true for you. I would love to know kind of what you're uh, what's keeping you stuck? So I see, I see quite a few fours. <laughs> I kind of expected that. I mean, this is what, what I see is the most common thing people keep keeping people stuck, but a few people who are saying like, it's the tiny audience, number one, that's the keeping them stuck, overwhelming ideas, quite a few. Um, thank you, Aisha, for raising your hand on the scattered selling. Uh, and then Sharon two and three. Amazing. Thank you all so much for sharing. I say amazing, not because you or I love where you're at right now, but because I love where you're going. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to shrink this triangle because we're going to run out of space really quick. Look at that. Okay. So now the question is, what do you do with that? Right? Like if that's, if that's where we're at right now is you've got, you're either stuck at tiny audience, scattered selling or overwhelmed, overwhelming ideas, uh, which apparently I spelled wrong, which is something that happens often. I find not in my normal life, but when I'm uh, like live presenting, like it's like math is harder, spelling is harder, everything is harder when you've got a live audience. But regardless, this is the career I've chosen, so I don't have no one to blame. Um, so what do you do? Well, let's kind of go through these one by one in terms of where where do you want to move from. If you have a tiny audience, what you want to move to instead of that um, is you want to move towards loyal leads. And I'll explain how to do that. Now, notice I didn't say limitless leads. That would be a really clever thing to say here in digital marketing, to say like limitless leads, like a huge audience, massive audience. The key thing I want to point I want to make here is that the biggest change is actually not necessarily having a huge audience. It's going deep with a few. It's building trust and belief with a handful that want to go with you further. Um, it's the difference between selling like a coaching program, for example, and selling other products is that you don't need hundreds or thousands of customers to be successful with this. Um, in fact, let me just pause real quick and just break down the math on uh, the new, on the $10,000 per month, where that comes from real quick. So there's a lot of ways to get here. Um, but the math that I typically see to be successful that I recommend is that the first time you launch a program, um, what you do is you invite five clients to pay you $2,000. Now, typically that's a 60 day program, right? So 60 or 90 days where you're walking people through a result. And typically what that looks like is you have a 90 minute meeting once a week for that period, whether it's 60 or 90 days, let's just call it 60 to keep it simple. So that's eight meetings over 60 days that are 90 minutes long. And you're walking people through the milestones towards a key result that's worth $2,000 to them. So that's the first cohort. And you do that, you get incredible results for people, you get incredible testimonials, you get paid $10,000 to create your material because We'll talk about in a minute about what you create before the program starts, but most of the material for your program, you're actually going to create while you're group coaching uh, week by week. So that's your first cohort. So then what you do now is that you, you circle back and you say to the world <laughs> or to your audience or leads, you say, look, I, that sold out program that I just ran, it's I'm opening up again. Now, this part you might not emphasize publicly, but privately what I'm telling you is now we do a double double. So this program was sold out before, which is huge authority for you. Even though it's just five clients, it was sold out. That was a intentional cap you put on it. And so when that happens, now you go up and you say, okay, we're going to do a double-double. The second time we're going to launch this, we're going to have 10 clients paying $4,000 each. And now you know a lot more from that first group in terms of how did you do that? What did you teach them? What did they learn? What kind of results did they get? And so you're, that's why you're able to charge a premium. Now, there's a hundred ways you can break this up, right? So $4,000 is a sticker shock. I know for some people, they're like, there's no way I could charge that. Well, first of all, don't worry about that. Remember, you just got to start here and you're going to work up towards that. But there's also, I mean, officially, you don't ever have to go to 4,000. You could just stay at 2,000 indefinitely. But I find that in most industries, if you go deeper in terms of how is this transformation going to dramatically affect and change their life, 
then you can find a way that's worth 4,000. That might mean that it's a thousand dollars a month for four months, right? That might mean that you break it down. So it's a little more bite size, easier for someone to latch onto. Regardless, that's cohort number two. So now the third time you launch this program, again, at this point, you've started to build a reputation. You're starting to get clients, happy clients who are willing to refer you other clients. And now all of a sudden you say, you know what? I'm not going to get greedy. I'm going to keep this at 10 people. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a slight increase on the price. And this is probably, most people, this is the price you kind of hang out, hang out at for a long time with your group coaching program. It's about 5,000 in the US. Of course, if you're in another country, another currency, we got to do some math, but the principles still apply. So now all of a sudden, from that third cohort, you just made $50,000. Well, guess what happens when you add 10 to 40 to 50? That is actually $100,000 from a total of 25 clients. And you could do this in less than a year. Now, I've had clients who've done this exact path in six months. I would say for most people, I would recommend that you plan this is going to take you about nine or 10 months. So hence the idea of like you break that down really quick, that's $10,000 a month. But it doesn't stop there. Because now all of a sudden you take this $50,000 program and let's just say you decide next year you're going to repeat it and you decide how many times you want to do it. But let's just say you decide that you're going to actually do it four times next year. Once every quarter, you're going to open up this program. That means, that means once every 90 days, you need 10 clients. So it's not a huge number. But now all of a sudden, the next year do this, that's $200,000. Now we could go down the math in terms of like future cohorts. What does that lead to? That's not the focus of what we're doing today. But I have clients who've now gone from zero to seven figures to earning a million dollars from group coaching with this. Uh, I would say that's like the extreme. I don't want to promise that to anybody. Like this is not a get rich quick thing. This takes time. That was over like two and a half years of focus on this one offer. Um, but I have other clients who've gone from straight from zero to $100,000 in six months or even earn $35,000 in the first two months. And all of a sudden you realize like, wow, like this is a really great way to work closely with people that you gen you genuinely get to help them change their lives, make the world a better place. You get impact and income. I stand for both. So that's where the $10,000 a month comes from. So let's go back over here and talk about this. That's why you don't need limitless leads. You need loyal leads, but you also need to reposition away from a tiny audience. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, there's three things three key resources that are going to help you uh, achieve this. Um, one of them is a newsletter and not just any newsletter. You need a newsletter that's structured and designed to create customers for you by, by helping them believe in, believe in what you stand for, joining a movement, and then ultimately becoming clients. Uh, I also find it super helpful to have some sort of workshop that we develop that is something you could teach for free, which is a great way there's so many ways you can use this. You can use this kind of like today to talk to people who might become clients. Um, you can use this to, when you're talking to someone else who has access to your target audience to say, hey, would you be willing to be a referral partner for me? So someone else who already has the audience you, doesn't, you don't have, a lot of times they're under monetized. People with huge audience often are under monetized where you can go to them and you can say, hey, uh, you have access to my target customer. I like to teach this free workshop. Could I share this free workshop with your audience? And guess what? Anybody that comes over here and becomes a client for me, I'm going to pay you a referral fee as a way to say thanks. And so these three things, newsletter, workshop, and referrals, that's really the three core things. There's many other things you could do, but three core things that you need to get loyal leads. So that's one part of this whole math. But let's talk about scattered selling because once you have leads, once you have people who are interested in potentially learning from you, potentially working with you, what do you do next? Well, the next thing you need after that is you need simple sales, not scattered selling. You need simple sales, something that you don't really have to think about it too hard. It's just, it works. Um, and I don't, <laughs> I think, uh, <clears throat> tell me in the chat real quick. Would you rather have one simple sales or two scattered selling? This is a trick question. The answer is one. But just tell me in the chat real quick. I just want to make sure you're, you're paying attention. So uh, if you want simple sales, put a one in the chat. And if anybody says two, I'll find the block button. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I also entertain jokes, sarcasm. But for the purpose of today, one, 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 one. Good, good, good. I've still got you with me. You want simple sales. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, again, might not be surprising. There's three key resources that you need here. The reality is there's a hundred possible things you could put in place here. But the goal here is simple. Right? So we're not saying complex, advanced. We're, we're not saying any of that. We're saying, what is the simple way to get this done? And so what I found to sell a group coaching program and to achieve those goals 
you need three key resources. You need a you need a 10x promise, which is essentially a really powerful one sentence that captures the total transformation of your program. My 10x promise is right there in the center of the screen. Earn ten thousand dollars a month, good coaching ninety minutes a week. That's my 10x promise. It's very clear. I don't have to explain it. I can't explain it, but I don't have to. You're here because I said, hey, I'm teaching this impromptu workshop about how to earn $10,000 a month through coaching 90 minutes a week. Are you interested? And you said, yes, that's why you're here. So this is something where this is this doesn't have to be related to numbers or math or money. It could be related to whatever the total takeaway is, but it takes work to figure that out of like, what is the actual promise of your program? How is someone who starts your program going to be a different person when they end your program? So that's one of the key things that you need here. You need a 10x promise. Well, then once you have that, you need to have hand raisers. Now, these are really simple uh, email templates that you build your own private library about. That I say email templates. Some people do this in social media as well. Um, but where it's you essentially create your private library of messages where every time you share one, you get someone who's your target client to raise their hand and say, that's me. So hand raisers as a category, if you think about it, it's kind of like every day when you show up on the internet, whether you're talking to your email list or social media followers or whatever, there's just this huge crowd of people and you're looking out there. And the reality is, you know, the stay at home mom who uh, wants to learn how to make a hundred dollars on a week on the side to pay for date night. And the 30 year old business executive who wants to quit their high paying executive job and make a full time living online. They have very different needs, very different desires. And so, so much communication online is like one size fits all. And it's just like, that's just not how people work. And so hand raisers are designed for, if you imagine you have this whole crowd of people, it's a message that is designed to get your target client and only your target client to raise their hand in the audience and say, well, that's me, so that you can talk to them further. And how do you talk to them further? That's where we get to surf calls. Now, this is something I've actually written a book on. Uh, quick uh, show of hands. I can see the camera, so you, I can actually see this. Quick show of hands if you have a copy of Surf to Sell or have read it. Hey, not everybody. That's okay. It's not personal. Um, but it's a phenomenal book, if I do say so, and I'm the people have reviewed it. Um, it. This book is your guide to how to do serve calls. It's essentially a replacement for a sales call. It's how do you have a coaching conversation with somebody that genuinely leaves them better than the start of the conversation, but also gives you immense deep research into who your target customer is and their pain points, and also helps you sell a group coaching program or another premium program. So that's serve to sell. So I won't go to that in detail here because I've gone to that many other places, but serve calls are a really key part of the strategy. If you have those three things in place, a 10X promise that works with the library of hand raisers to get you serve calls to your target client, you have a simple sales system. That's all you need. So now let's talk about overwhelming ideas. What do you do here? Well, you do have a lot of good ideas and you have a lot of great ideas. You probably have some bad ideas, but I'm actually not going to talk about those. I'm really talking about your good and your great ideas. It's really hard when you're coaching a group to figure out what to share because you've got a finite amount of time and you've got a lot of people in different situations. It's actually one of the reasons why I love group coaching so much is because when you're um, when you're coaching one-on-one, -on -one, it's very choose your own adventure. It's very much like when you show up on a call, you may not have an agenda. You just say like, what's the problem? Let's solve it. And that's kind of it. Like that's the whole structure of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Sometimes you have a curriculum or something else you're going through, but it's very hard to go from one-on-one -on -one coaching to a one-to-many product, like a book or a course or a membership, because that's the big, the big divide is how do you create a shared path of transformation? How do you create a shared promise? It's really hard to do that, to go straight from one to the other successfully. You could, don't get me wrong. You can block out a weekend and record a massive online course, but it gives people to buy it because you actually created the right course. It solves the right problem. That's the million dollar question. And that's a lot harder to solve. And that's why uh, what I recommend is, is first before you go to, if you want to go to one, from one to one to one to many, you go to one to few. Because when you go to one to few, where you're serving a small group of people and helping them achieve a transformation, it forces you to take all your ideas and figure out what are the universal truths that I can teach to a small group. And it narrows down the things that you teach as progressing towards a concluding result, which is the 10X promise. That's why group coaching is so powerful. And you could do that and iterate live because I've taught my program now for almost three years and I've taught other programs in the past with different focuses. But the reality is the program I teach now is dramatically different and refined from the program I taught three years ago. But it doesn't mean the one I taught before was bad. It's just, I've learned what were the things I was teaching 
that was getting people distracted, that wasn't getting them results, that wasn't getting them progress. Can I, let me take that out. And can I actually to tell you the truth? I have cut 70% of what I teach in my program over the last three years. I've added a few things for sure, but I've cut 70% because it's not about knowledge transfer. It's about wisdom transfer. And wisdom is a combination of knowledge and experience, right? So I don't need to know everything you know. I just need to know enough to do the thing. I need to know enough to do the thing. And then I get wisdom. Wisdom comes from experience. If you think about it this way, um, knowledge without experience is typically known as book smarts, right? Like I can like, you know, my, there's plenty of college professors I met in my tenure. I'm sorry. I know some of you are actually from, from colleges, so I should probably hold my academic, uh, outrage inside. But, uh, in my past, when I worked in academia and I worked for like an economics research lab and I was, there was just so many frustrating interactions with people who taught in a classroom who had no real life experience. I'm not saying that's true for you all. That's them. We're talking about them. They're not here. Um, so that's book smarts, right? There's some element of it that's useful, but for the most part, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are missing. On the other hand, there's street smarts. If you have knowledge without experience, and I've met plenty of entrepreneurs like this that are just like, look, I accidentally built a company that now all of a sudden is doing five million dollars a year in revenue, but I'm also accidentally burning it to the ground from the inside because they built this business with a lot of street smarts of just like doing things but they didn't actually have the knowledge. Wisdom is both. It's book smarts and street smarts. It's knowledge and experience. So that's what we're trying to do here. So to do that, to impart that, you need a powerful program. One that you are excited, invigorated, and convicted about. That it's so good, you are convicted that the people you're talking to will be better off if they're in your program because if you don't believe it, they're not gonna believe it, right? We're here to make an impact. And so that means you have to have a powerful program um, that is so powerful that you're just like, yes, of course, obviously you need this thing. Um, I'm going to erase this and change this to green just to be consistent here. Uh, I muted because my four-year-old did actually break down the wall to my office and my door and run in just now yelling, Fortnite, Fortnite, it's cozy, cozy hour. Uh, but thankfully my wife was at the door and grabbed him. So we're fine. But it gave me time to change that to green. So look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So uh, let's go ahead and move some of our other stuff out of the way just to kind of separate some of these ideas. All right. By the way, we're almost like completing this model and then we're going into questions and live coaching. So start thinking now, like, what do you want to know, right? Because Obviously, this is something that when I'm working with a group, this takes six months to go deep into every single one of these things. And so we're not going to go do all of that in the next uh, 37 minutes, but we'll go as far as we can. Uh, I have no secrets. All right. So let's go here and say to create a powerful program, let me tell you what you don't need to do. You don't need to go create a 100 slide or beautifully designed deck that goes through your whole material and then block out a weekend and record the whole thing as a course. Um, you don't need to have custom workbooks for every single week. Um, you don't need any of that. Honestly, most of that becomes useless pretty quickly because you need to be able to have enough of a structure that you can help people, but enough flexibility that you can help people. Because if you're, if you have a eight week program and you're on week three and you realize that some people are getting stuck and they're not getting progress and you're like, well, it's time for week four. It's tone deaf, you lose people. And so you need a program that can actually move with the group. Because sometimes you get a group, and I can't always explain it, right? Sometimes I get a group where it's just like, bam, we are getting results left and right. Everybody's just like selling like crazy. And sometimes you get a group where we're like, all right, we're on week eight. Let's try, someone get a sale, please. Like, <laughs> and so uh, there's things that are on you. And sometimes there's cultural things. I mean, I've taught groups where like, you know, uh, oh man, like teaching, trying to sell a program and then start a program right when the Russian Ukraine war broke out, everyone's distracted. Right. And so it's just like really hard for people to come. like things like happen, things, global things that's out of your control. And so you just need to have some flexibility. So there's three things you need here. You need milestones. You need a map. And you need a mastermind. So those are the only things, three things you need. And that was a P at one point in my head, but it does not look like a P. So I'm going to fix that. Um, so when you have these three things in place, um, what this looks like is the milestones are essentially a breakdown of your 10x promise. So this is where you take that 10x promise and you kind of break it down and you say, 
hey, the TEDx promises earn $10,000 a month group coaching 90 minutes per week. But let me show you the three milestones to get there. Look at that. We already did it, right? You just saw an example of what milestones look like. They take a very big promise and they make it believable. Now, they also become a really clear roadmap for your program. Because now all of a sudden, you know what you're teaching towards. You're teaching towards the next milestone, the next key result. And so the map is where you take the milestones and you map them out throughout the schedule of what you're doing. So that might mean that you're saying, okay, uh, here's a pretty, this is a common template I start with. Um, okay, so we're going to have, uh, let's see, we are going to have one, two, through seven. So we're going to have this eight-week program. And what we're going to do is in week one, it's all about... Um, intro is not really the right word for it, but, but basically it's all, it's really all about connection. So this is where you recognize that your group is actually going to be more valuable if the people in the group know you, know what you're all working towards, but it's also where you, they get to know each other. If you could think about this sort of like we're a group that's climbing up a mountain together, it's like, if we just start walking right away and you're like, wait, who's, who's who? Like, what do you, what, you know, if one person, for example, is a trained EMT, I want to know that. So that when we're when I break my leg on the mountain, then I know who to call for help. And so getting to know a little bit about who else is in the group is really key here. And then I always end every single cohort with that final meeting, very focused on total takeaways. Now, th what's cool about this is you can kind of reverse engineer. The takeaway is going to be some version of your 10x promise, right? Like, what do you want people to walk away with? And it's like, oh, man, for example, for mine, it's going to be something like, hey, well, my, I, want, I want people to have the takeaway where they're talking about some of these resources in blue or some of those results in green or even better, the gold in the middle, right? I want those are the, those are the kind of things that I want to come up during that final takeaway session. So you kind of reverse engineer this, but you end that last session by just getting everybody on a high by saying like, hey, what's your most useful takeaway from this program? And getting everyone to share that. So that's that kind of writes itself. So then all you have in the middle is this is actually where you map your milestones, right? So this is where you would actually go week by week. Okay, what am I gonna teach each week? to help people get to the next milestone. And that's gonna be the core of that. Um, I'll, give, I'll go one level deeper and then I'll open it up for questions and Q&A. But in that map, what you're gonna also have is you're gonna have a schedule for each, for each week. And so my go-to template for this is that you want, it's 90 minutes, right? I mean, that's kind of part of my whole promise. So what you want here is 15, 15, 30, and 30. So you want, 15 minutes of people sharing their wins of the week. This is strategic for lots of reasons. It starts meeting with positivity because no matter what you're teaching, it's uncomfortable to make change. So your job as a teacher, as a coach, is to get people to change their lives, which is uncomfortable. So let's try to make it fun and exciting. So you always start by saying, hey, what's your win of the week? I'll tell you a behind the scenes thing. This is also useful because there's some people in your group that no matter what you do will always be five or 10 minutes late. Now they don't miss your core content. Now you don't have to repeat yourself. They come in in the middle of the wins and you're like, hey, welcome. Come on, we're just sharing our wins of the week. What's yours? And it's just really seamless. And that way you don't penalize the prompt. So wins is right there. So then next we do training for about 30 minutes. So this is the core thing that you've prepped. So this is some core lesson that you're teaching for about 30 minutes. Now, 30 minutes might seem long to you. It might seem short to you. Guess what? It has been 29 minutes since we started this call. I'm not, this is not a 90 minute group coaching call. I'm not following this model exactly. Um, but I've covered a lot of grounds in the last 30 minutes and without a bunch of slides. <laughs> um, now you can do slides. Some people love that. And I actually, honestly, some of the things I teach, I do actually use slides. I'm not trying to bash slides as a category. I'm just saying some people feel the need to like super produce everything they do. And a group coaching model, that's not always useful because you want to be, be able to flex to the people in the group. So 30 minutes of training and then about 30 minutes of coaching. Now, the way I differentiate between training and coaching is training is where you're teaching a universal truth and coaching is where you're personalizing that to the people in the room. So that depending upon what you're teaching, that might mean you actually having the people like, for example, with your first cohort, which is five, you might have literally every single person take five minutes and let's do some live coaching on how to apply what we just did. Or it might mean that during your training, you actually spend 20 minutes teaching something, 10 minutes where you say, okay, I'm gonna put a timer on the screen. I want you to go ahead and create your draft right now on the call. And then you get to 30 minutes of, okay, share what you came up with. Let me give you feedback. And so this is just a, this is a flexible model, it's, it, but it, it's super useful because then people get to learn something, they get to do something. Your goal is to minimize homework. There's gonna be homework. There's gonna be, I like to actually call it extra credit. 
Because, but I try to keep my program so that if you just come to the nine minute training every week, you're making progress. If you just come to the nine minute training every week, you're on, you're following that map to the milestones. And then everything else I do, I refer to as extra credit. Some people will love that. Some people love to go like deep dive on like a bunch of videos, worksheets, exercises. And some people who are really busy will just say like, if, if they're not feeling like they're making progress in the 90 minute meeting each week, they'll feel like they're falling behind and they'll be frustrated by that. So then we've got wins, training, coaching, and then takeaways. So this is where, just like the big one, when you do a total takeaway of the program, you just ask someone on the call, hey, what's your most useful takeaway from today's training? And this does two things. Actually, it does three things. One thing it does is it activates the long-term memory part of every single person in the room's brain because now they're refining and they're reflecting. So instead of just doing the work where they're sort of like in this, they might be in a flow state or they might just be like in the zone for you to have someone to pause and reflect, what was your most useful takeaway? When you do that, it actually uh, causes them to be more likely to remember it. So that's super useful as a coach that they're going to actually remember this and come back to it later. It also makes sure that you end the training on positivity, just like you started the training on positivity, because now everyone's walking away going like, wow, I learned so much. Instead of walking away going, oh my gosh, I have so much homework to do. And now they're more likely to keep making progress. The third thing it does is it recaps the day. So instead of you saying, let me tell you what I taught you and kind of recapping everything you taught, your clients do it for you because they list all the takeaways. And then now you go, yep, that's what we covered today. You, they just recap the whole thing for everybody on the call. And that's it. So that's the whole agenda. Now you still have to break down what you can actually do in the training and the coaching for each of those weeks but it's very doable. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you, first of all, let me just make sure you've got this. Feel free to take a screenshot of this. I'm also gonna send you a recording uh, of everything we covered today. Let me make sure you can see all that. Yes, you can see the whole thing. Okay, feel free to take a screenshot if you'd like. Um, and I'm also gonna send you the recording of today. Um, and then what I wanna do is before we get to questions, I wanna just pause and ask, what's your most useful takeaway from today's coaching so far? If you would, Share that in the chat. I would love to know. Um, so come, come on, share. Love to hear. I'm just catching up with the chat too. I see that there's some great insights here. Sure, this is like your frameworks. Thank you. Uh, Debbie says the map. Yes, amazing. Uh, yeah, Sarah said that things don't have to be as complicated as they fear they might be. Yes, that's so much of this. And that's your job for your clients too, by the way, is to take something that you know a mass amount about and to kind of narrow it down and make it simple and bite size. Uh, Kristen says, I don't need hundreds or thousands of customers. Love that, so true. Gil said, distilling down to a meaningful 10X promise. I'm working through that now, awesome. Uh, Dan Yal says, D Daniela? I I'm curious how you pronounce that. I wanna say like Danielle or something like that. But uh, she says, love the powerful program structure. Map is great, doable, awesome. Stephanie says, I love the idea of not needing to prepare everything beforehand. I feel like this removes a major obstacle to getting started, yes. Uh, Monica says, the milestone of maps helps break it down, amazing. Susan said, love this format for group coaching and opens ways to the stumbling blocks that I have faced. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, Y'all, there are so many useful takeaways. Thank you for sharing these. I love that. Uh, Sandra, like you said, yeah, loyal leads simple selling. So notice like these are not really separate things. Like they're kind of, I'm presenting them as separate things, but loyal leads create simple sales. And guess what? Part of the simple sales process is creating your 10X promise, which is how you create a powerful program. So it's actually all like, this is this is one comprehensive thing of how it all fits together. Love that. Okay, so didn't think about referrals. It's a huge way to get clients. Um, love that you're focused on that. Susan said, help me, help me. It, <laughs> it keeps me focused on my ideal client. Apparently I'm starting to get dry mouth with her. Get a little water. Um, and thank you, Danielle, for clarifying their name is pronounced. Danielle, love it. Uh, my brother's name is Daniel. So um, I called him Danielle many times as a uh, annoying brother. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's a different problem. Um, I saw some questions earlier that I want to make sure I jump back to real quick. Um, one of them is simply the question about the tool. Don't stress about the tools, but I have no secrets. Um, I'm using Notability on my iPad. And Zoom has a great way where you can, in Zoom, you can AirPlay from a Mac to an iPad and use it like a second monitor, but also do things like this. There's 100 tools I could have used to do the exact same thing, though. Um, and Aisha, I love that you pointed out that asking for takeaways gets you micro testimonials. Yes. So... Um, in fact, let me just show you real quick. Um, so I've got a massive amount of testimonials for the work that I do. 
And I want to show what I want to show you is as it relates to what you just said, Asia, about micro testimonials. Let me see if I can just share this with you real quick. We're switching back to the Mac. So not really that fancy. I was going to say really fancy, but it's not. Um, okay. So here's what I want to show you. There are so many testimonials down here. Most of these, the majority of these came from me saying either on a call or an email, what was your most useful takeaway? And then whatever they said, I would reply back and say, thank you so much. That was so kind. Would you be willing to let me share that in a testimonial publicly? And usually they were just like, oh yeah. And I got way better testimonials than if I had just said, could you write me a testimonial? Which is kind of like the go-to. So that's a huge benefit of the takeaway question. Um, for the really, really good testimonials, like when somebody was like, oh, I just made a bunch of money from this or something like that. Um, then what I would do is I would actually follow up and I would say like, hey, would you be able to record a video about that? And so that's why I've got so many great video testimonials uh, on here too. So just throwing that out there. Um, now let's, you've all shared some amazing takeaways. I love that. I want to spend, make sure the rest of this time is super useful to you. So let's uh, get into your questions. So I'd love to know what questions you've got so far um, about what we've covered so far today. And so if you would do exactly what Carta did, Carta gets a gold star. I don't have any gold stars, Carta, but you get one. Um, for demonstrating that, that if you have a question or, or something where you're thinking, maybe it's not a general question, maybe it's just coaching. Like you're like, I want to figure out how, does, how do I use this? How does this apply to me? Then do what Carta just did, raise your hand, and then I'll ask you to unmute and then we'll talk. So Carta, thank you for coming back to the Encore. And it, you may notice it was a little different because I knew there were some people who were coming back two weeks in a row. Um, so yeah, what can I do for you? This is great. Thank you so much. And I'm just, I'm like eating up. I needed a roadmap and I found it and I'm so appreciative. So Amazing. my question has to do with how much time does it take to sell this 10X promise to sell that coaching program? Like how much lead time yeah. should we give ourselves to do the sales part of it, to do the outreach? Yes. You know, I love that I don't have to be on social media to do this if I don't want to, because that's, yeah, that feels good. <laughs> So. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I I didn't mention that earlier, but if anybody doesn't know, I am on zero social media platforms. I did it. I played that game. I'm not interested. Um, some people are really great at that game. It's not my game. Uh, so I'm on zero social media platforms. Um, back to your question, Carta. So uh, my general advice for someone the first time you're selling your first cohort is to schedule the start date 60 days out. Now you can do it in less time, um, but I think that that gives you the right amount of time to like start figuring out what exactly your offer is, kind of teasing that offer, getting people lined up to do serve calls, selling them to your program. And also I've had some clients who've actually like sold out their program six weeks in advance. And that's a pretty cool feeling, right? Like that's where it's just like, if you do that, you have a couple of choices. You can just say, well, one of my clients, Dustin, what he did the first time he did that, where he sold out his clients or his program six weeks in advance was he just told his wife and kids, he's like, pick the best restaurant in town. And they just went out and celebrated because he's like, I wanted, he wanted to train his mind and his body that like, do more of that. You know, <laughs> like we're not that much different from uh, animal, other animals in terms of like, let's train your body to do more things, more of that. Um, but the other thing is that uh, I had another client who did it and he said, I think I can do more. And so he sold out his first cohort, five clients paying $2,000. He still had six weeks to go. Um, and so what he did was he just opened up in their five spots. And see now he's like, there's so much demand. I'm going to actually open up five more spots. And he sold out those as well. Mm -hmm. So that's all an option. I like 60 days. It gives you the right amount of time. It gives you a decent amount of urgency too. Because if your program's too far out, it's hard to sell. And candidly, two things happen the closer you get to the start date of your program. Your anxiety goes up and the ease at which you close a sale goes up. Because when you say, <laughs> my program starts tomorrow, are you in? And they're like, yeah, yes. No, they don't want to miss it. And so it becomes a lot easier to close sales the closer you get to your start date, but your stress level also goes up. And in my experience, and I've closed sales literally an hour. Like I'm on the phone with somebody. And I'm like, Hey, the kickoff calls in an hour. I've got one spot left. And he's like, I want it. I'm in. So I've done that. Right. But it, <laughs> I'm getting stressed just thinking about just like reflecting back on that moment. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, Carter, do you have follow -up questions to that? I actually do. And it, yeah. it is like, you know, I mentioned like, ah, I don't have to do social media. Great. And, you know, I've kind of been targeting just like emailing and texting people I know. Yeah. Like, yes. hey, how's it going? I'm doing this thing or you or someone you know might be interested. Is that kind of, you know, could you say more about how you 
you know, outreach? Yes. Um, Especially if you're just getting started. <laughs> Well, I mean, I can tell you if you want to, one of the best things to do is uh, watch what I do. So look back at the emails that I sent to get you to, that I got you to say yes to this call. Those are all examples of hand raisers. Now, hand raisers is like a whole category. Mm -hmm. um, and in my coaching program, I actually have a whole swipe file that I call the sold out swipe file that has a library of dozens of different examples of like emails that you can use and why they work. Um, but let me do, let me tell you, let me show you and can tell you the um, most basic version of or some of the more easier to start with. There's probably two that I can show you real quick, uh, which I think you'll find useful. Um, while I do that, pull that up, by the way, I'm going to drop this link in the chat one more time. If you found today useful so far and you want to go deeper, and if you're interested in potentially working with me and my team to earn $10,000 per month, group coaching 90 minutes per week, please book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I don't sell one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. I used to, I got to the point where I was selling it up to like $500 an hour, but I wanted to create a group program. And so now the only time I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching is when I occasionally open up my calendar and say, okay, I'm gonna take some one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with someone who might be interested in working together. There's no obligation. If you come to that call and we talk and you're like, I got what I need, I'm good, amazing. Uh, my business is, I'm here to help you and serve you. But if you're interested in working with me and my team, I have a new program starting next month that is amazing, I'm excited about it. And I say that as some like, not, I'm not saying it's amazing because I'm full of myself. I'm saying it's amazing because Last year, my clients earned more than a million dollars from group coaching. And I took all of our programs that we've sold over the last 10 years and I simplified them and combined them into one program. And it's based on the visual you saw today. So now that I've said that, and many of you I'm sure are going to book those calls while there's still space in my calendar, um, then let me go ahead and pull up the sold out swipe file. And I wanna show you a couple examples of what these hand raisers look like to get people to say yes. So my my favorite to start with is called the want a 10 X hand raiser. It's super simple. As long as you have a 10 X promise, right? You do actually have to come up with a 10 X promise and that takes work and effort. Um, but the 10 X promise, the simplest version of that is basically like, you know, get result without roadblock. Think of that as like a fill in the blank. I'm gonna just put that in the chat real quick. Actually, Annette, if you could type that in the chat. Annette is here, she's my co-host that I introduced her earlier, but she is my partner in crime and a lot of this stuff. Um, so get result without roadblock is kind of the general idea. And my 10 X promise is molded over time. So here's what this email looks like. And I said this to my email list. Hey, would you be interested in working with me to 10X Promise? At the time, it was create a new flagship product and sell it to make $10,000 in 90 days. Um, it's an older version of my promise. Um, so Dustin, as this example, is already a client. So I think hence the 17 question, exclamation points, points. But this is a great example of an email that's the very simplest version of a hand raiser is this is something that you could say, it's very direct, right? So it's very much like, do you want to work with me to do this thing? Um, but when you do this, those yeses, the next question from there is just like, amazing. Like, let's talk about it. You don't just send them to a sales page. You find out some more information about them. Make sure you think they're a good fit. Invite them for a free coaching call. And then serve to sell is your exact framework on how to run that call, the serve call itself. Um, so that's one example of a hand raiser. Another example, which is less direct and on the nose and more flexible, but also super useful, is called the who do you know hand raiser. Uh, it is in here somewhere. I'm just gonna search for it. Here we go. So the template here is insert name here. You know, can you help me? After aspirational backstory, I have opened up some space in my calendar for complimentary coaching. And I'd like to serve someone specific who criteria, criteria, desire. Do you know one like that? So here's a real life example of what this looks like for me. Can you help me? After phasing out all my one-on-one -on -one clients, so for my target client, that is aspirational, right? For many people here, if you have one-on-one -on -one clients, the idea of phasing out one-on-one -on -one is aspirational. I've opened up some space in my calendar for a complimentary coaching, and I'd like to serve someone specific who has worked in the same industry for 10 plus years, has capped out with a full client litter of their income ceiling, and would be interested in building a group coaching program based on their experience, charging 2K to 10K per client. Do you know anyone like that? Um, that's a message that works phenomenal in multiple places. You can use this on social media as a post. You can use it as a DM. You can use it as a text message. You can use it as an email. And it is designed, it's phrased as a very uh, kind of like low pressure request because part it's basically just asking them for a referral. But if they, most often what happens is like Jamie here, they'll reply and say, wait a minute, that's me. <laughs> Um, which is kind of the goal, honestly. We just want it to be a very low pressure way to engage people. So those are a couple examples of hand raisers. There's many more, but you could just take those two and plenty of people have built their program just off the back of those two hand raisers. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Carta. Um, oh, Aisha, I love to hear that. You got the Who Do You Know email and you're like, I loved it. That's the goal here too, is like, 
it's a pattern interrupt, right? In your newsletter, in your inbox, there's all these newsletters and ads. And then you get an email that you think, oh my gosh, that's me. And that's kind of the goal here is we want people to feel seen and heard. And then we want to help them. All right, Erwin, let's get to your question next. And I appreciate that you left. I'm guessing that's like the like the image of your uh, university to call me out for my uh, academia criticism earlier. Um, <laughs> is that what that is? It, sh it should have been, but, it, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Because I yeah. kind of agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's your question? What can I do for you? Um, I was, I was going to, I was asking uh, to get referrals. Are we looking for people who are in complementary uh, businesses, service yeah. or product businesses? Yeah. So there's two different types of referrals. I see that there's probably three types, but I'm going to tell you about two types that, you know, like, you know, how it works with most of these things in life. It's like, there's probably three types of everything. I'm going to tell you two. Um, okay, so obviously John froze. He'll be back in just a second. Hold tight. In the meantime, if you've got questions, be sure to hey, raise back. your hand too. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was talking for a minute. I was like, weird. Every single person but me froze. Wait a minute. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. You can hear me now, right? Thumbs up. You can hear me? Nods. Yes. Okay, great. Um, all right. It's the master of suspense. That, that was not the goal, Jake, but I'm glad it worked out that way. <clears throat> there are two types of referrals. The most valuable type of referral is from a paying client. So if you have people who, even, even though you're launching a new group coaching program, you probably don't have past group coaching clients, but you probably have clients I say probably, you might have clients or something else. Are there people who have bought a course from you before, who have bought one-on-one -on -one coaching or consulting from you before, who have bought anything else from you before, who may be willing to become a referral partner for you? Those are the best, highest quality referrals because they've already invested with you and they've already had a return on that investment of some kind in terms of just the change in their life. Um, and they trust you. And they're honestly, even if they're only sending, like not like a massive, they don't have to have a massive podcast or email list. You know, they're just saying, oh, I know two people who actually might benefit from you. Let me set a personal intro. That's immensely valuable. So that's the best valuable. However, the probably the easier one to get, even if it's a lower quality referral, are people in complementary businesses or industries. So, I mean, be creative about this, right? So, for example, um, Erwin, what do you sell? What do you what do you offer? Let's, do, let's use a real life example instead of a fake one. Um, do you know what your, even if you don't have your 10X promise yet, do you know roughly what transformation you want to help people with? Yeah, I'm trying to help people find the love that they want. And that's actually my. Okay. In, in love, like a, in a marriage or, or like a relationship? Relationship and marriage. Okay, um, great. Yeah. Okay. So the, so the obvious place to go that you should not go to are podcasts about marriage. Um, because every single other guest is also selling the same thing. Every author, every coach on the podcast is selling um, how to how to get how to get happiness, and so it's you'll get, you get lost in the sea of it. I'm not saying you should like if if you get invited to be on a top marriage podcast. My friend Tony Delorenzo actually has the top marriage podcast. It's called the like One Extraordinary Marriage. Um, if you were to be a guest on there, amazing. But I would not pursue that. Instead, what I would do is I would look for things that are complementary and related, but that might be surprising. For example, what if there is a podcast? This is kind of the first one that comes to mind. What if there's a divorce podcast, right? So the one that's very focused on like, how do you actually know you're ready for divorce? How do you file a divorce? How do you recover from divorce? Well, now all of a sudden, that's like one step removed. You come in as a guest and you say, okay, if you've been divorced and now you're ready to get back out there, here's what you should be thinking about. Like, here's how your situation is different. But another example, obviously something completely different. It might be that you actually go to, you, you know, ask, you offer to be a guest on a show that's focused on, something related to travel. So for example, there are a lot of, uh, I know there's there's a whole niche that's focused on women who travel the world alone. There's a, Because there's a lot, <laughs> men uh, don't need a lot of guides for that. Like the way that our world works, like men don't listen to podcasts about how to travel the world alone, they just do it. But women wanna travel the world alone, they wanna know, okay, how do I do this safely? How do I do this smart? How do I do this independently? Um, well, that's a great example of a super motivated target client who is most likely very loyal to the people they're learning from. And they may not have a lot of content on that podcast about dating or romance. They may, but I would take a look at that. And I would look at their archive and say like, hey, one thing you haven't talked about is 
how, when you're someone who loves to travel, how do you develop a long-term relationship, right? There's got to, there's some unique challenges there, right? Because you're not going to invite your, you know, someone you just started dating to go on a cross-country trip with you or a cross-global trip with you. So when do you know you're ready to travel with somebody? That might be the title of the topic episode. When do you know you're ready to travel the world with somebody? So those are some examples of what complementary businesses might look like. But um, Erwin, does that spark, spark some ideas for you? Yes, it does. I think I appreciate that. Oh, good. It's my pleasure. Anita, you're up next. And thank you all so much. By the way, actually, real quick, Anita, <clears throat> before you share yours, um, I want to show one thing on my calendar. I 100% promise Scout's Honor, this was not staged. I'm going to live show you my my calendar and Google. That's all. It's chaos. And I want to show you the meeting that just got canceled 10 minutes from now. There's a blank spot there that was not there. <laughs> I don't know how to prove to you I didn't plan that, um, but he just canceled while I was on here live. And I was like, well, okay, I guess I'm still free. So I'm not going to hold anyone around. Like if you if you need to leave at some point, like by all means leave. Um, but I, I that means I don't have as hard of a stop at the top of the hour, so to speak. Um, so all that to say, uh, yeah, Card is like, the universe works in serious ways. Yes. I, I, when I saw that happen in my head, I was like, oh, that's cool. I can stand longer. Okay. How do I convince people this wasn't just a marketing gimmick? I don't know. You're just going to have to trust me. Um, but Anita, you're up next. Um, at what stage and point do you need a website for this thing? Do you need a website to do coaching and stuff? And when will you um, develop a yeah. website for that? Uh, you do not need a website for a group coaching program. Um, what you need is some sort of some sort of credibility proof, but that doesn't have to be a website. It could be a social media profile. It could be just like your general. It doesn't even have to be a website for this program. It could be that you actually have a one page website that's just a bio about you. You could have a blog. I okay. So I had a client who I started working with last year who did all the things he thought you were supposed to do. So he um, he created a, a website for his group coaching program. He created an application form. You fill out the application form. You went into an automated email funnel and it got you to like watch a webinar, pay a deposit, all those complicated stuff that if you've spent any time in this space, you probably heard you're supposed to do all these things. It wasn't working. He spent a bunch of money on ads. He has a huge email list. No, most people don't. He has 50,000 email subscribers and he got one sale in nine months. So step one, we started working together. As I said, delete everything, just delete it. I said, send one email to your list that says, hey, would you be interested in working with me, Sean Blanc, to run your full-time business working part-time hours? He got dozens of replies. He sent a follow-up saying, tell me more about your situation. Figured out which one of those he thought was the people that he could help the most, invited them on a surf call, and sold out his program. And then he sold it out again, again, again. And he's getting ready to launch his program for the fourth time, but it's been sold out three times in a row. And every time he raises the number of people in the program or the price. So yeah, Carter said, please, no funnels. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so all that to say, the website can actually work against you when it comes to a group coaching program, because there are, I talk about this in the book, Surf to Sell. There are four barriers to someone buying a premium product. There's four uh, hurdles they have to overcome. Oh, quick pop quiz for those of you that read the book. What are those four? Can you name any of them in the chat? You don't, I mean, extra gold stars if you name all four, but I don't, I'm not going to expect that. Do you know any of the four barriers that I teach that keep someone from buying a premium program? If you know any of them, post it in the chat and let's just see. This is an unplanned pop quiz, but I was homeschooled, so I never really know much pop quiz pop quizzes. I think this is how it works. Uh, Kristen said, do they trust you? Credibility. That's right. That is one of them. Amazing. What else? Kayla said, believability. You're doing this in order, y'all? This is amazing. You must have the answer key. Uh, Carter says, scarcity. Okay. This is definitely cheating now because they did it exactly in the belief in the order that I teach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I say cheating. Thank you all for being good students. Yeah, Jake's like, they beat me to it. Um, that's okay. Uh, so yeah, credibility, believability, and scarcity. But there's actually a fourth one that comes before that, which is desire. So desire is, do they want the promise? Do they Like if I'm telling you, and it's the, do they want it enough actually to work for it is also an important thing. Because if you sell me a program right now, that's like, hey, I'll get you a six pack. I'm like, I've never had a six pack. I can't imagine that. I kind of think maybe I want it, but not really. Like it's not top of my list right now. It's like the, I am my in my head, the work to get a six pack is more than it's worth to me. Uh, I assume you don't know. I don't mean like a six pack of hard cider. I mean like apps, but like the promise is really key. The, the promise test desire. So when I say, would you like to earn $10,000 per month? Group question 90 minutes per week. I'm testing desire. What happens on a sales page 
is you do a lot more than test desire. You give all the information, um, you give all the details, the reasons why they may or may not want the thing. And, and someone has a one-sided conversation where they, without you being part of it, and they talk themselves out of buying it. The only thing you want to know at first is if somebody says, uh, is if somebody says they want it, right? It's desire. Once you have confirmed desire, now you want to, they're a lead, and now you want to move them through your sales process. Now, if the hand raisers are designed to also kind of whittle that down a little bit, like just because someone wants a thing doesn't mean they can get it or they should get it. Um, so the hand raisers are also designed to help you whittle that down a little bit. So you're talking to the right people. And then in a serve call is really where you get clear on that. And then ultimately you guide them through credibility, believability, and scarcity. So credibility is can't like, do you actually know what you're talking about? Can they trust you? Are you a credible source? If I back up for this one, if I am trying to teach you, okay, you can't really tell, but if I'm trying to teach you how to get a six pack, I just shouldn't. I'm not credible. I'm not credible. I know that. I'm not ashamed of that. I just, I'm not credible. Don't, don't hire me to teach you that. Believability is when is the next level of credibility, which is like, sure, I know you could help some people, but can you help me? Because I'm very special in my unique situation where your solutions are just not going to work for me. And so many people believe this. This is where a lot of people get stuck is believability. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, you help that other person. But what about me? And then the third is scarcity. So it's once I've established, you once you've convinced me of credibility, once you've convinced me of believability, the last thing is scarcity, which is, is this worth my money and time? But on a sales page where you lead with, Here's the date the program starts. Here's how long it is and here much, how much it costs. You're answering scarcity questions before you've confirmed desire, believability, or credibility. So in all that to say, no, you don't need a sales page. You need a promise. Now, the reality is you could sell any product this way, but it, the math does not make sense to sell books or courses without a sales page. Because if I have to convince you to buy my $10 book that I can make $3 from, and if I have to do that over email and a call, I'm going to be out of business pretty quick. <laughs> and so the reality is you can sell any product this way where you just have the promise and don't have a sales page. But sales pages are designed to be one of those things that's scalable, that doesn't require a lot of your time and effort. So people can go have the sales conversations on their own without you. And for a $10 product or a $50 product, that makes sense. But when you're selling something that's $2,000 or more, it's worth your time to actually talk to the customer. I'm glad that's helpful, you, Anita. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to the other questions. We've got two minutes to the top of the hour. I'm going to stick around, but I know some of you will have to go, and that's totally fine. Um, if you haven't already, um, then I would encourage you to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Um, if you're interested in go going deeper into this and potentially working together to earn $10,000 per month from coaching 90 minutes per week, I have a really cool opportunity coming up starting next month that I'm excited to share. Chris, what's your question? Oh, I have to hit a button. Sorry, so you can talk. Um, Chris, what's your question? How can I help Hi, John. you? First, great to see you. I actually talked talk to you for a while at Pat Flynn's one and only conference. Oh yeah, Flint one and only. Flint one and only. Yeah, great and to see only. you. <laughs> yeah, I was also too, Chris. I was yeah. also involved with your previous business uh, operation as well. Anyway, oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, this is great. I, I, I want to just put it out there. That this is really um, you cut through a lot of the smoke and the nonsense. Good. Get right to the meat. Yeah. So the stuff I'm trying to focus on is to deal with or to help online solopreneurs to deal with shiny objects syndrome yes SOS. do you think that's a viable thing ah okay that is a great example of what i call selling the medicine and sell, instead of selling the cure so this is a really key thing that's like i'm just going to tell a quick story that helps explain it but um if i so right now actually normally i have to kind of describe this of like imagine it's hot outside no, it's really hot outside. We have a heat advisory in Tennessee and the wind, the little AC in my office is broken, but I can't leave the door open because the kids come running in. So currently the temperature is climbing in here, but let's just say that it climbed a lot faster and all of a sudden I start wheezing and I'm having trouble yeah. breathing. And then I start freaking out and I go across the street to the urgent health clinic and I sit down with the doctor and I'm like, what is going on? And I'm, I'm freaking out here. And if he looks at me and just says, I'll be all. I'm more scared. I'm, it's not helpful. I'm, I'm not really sure what he's trying to say. But the thing is, he knows a lot of things I don't know. He knows that I'm exhibiting all the symptoms of exercise-induced asthma or heat-induced asthma in this case. He knows the quickest way to actually give me relief is with an inhaler. And he knows the most common prescription medication used uh, in the US in an inhaler is albuterol. Well, I don't need that. I don't know that. I just need him to say, I can help you breathe again. If he says that, I calm down and I believe him and I follow him. So shiny object syndrome, I would say is a good example of medicine. Right. Can okay, I just so be a little yeah. more specific about that? Okay. Please. So, so I'm a, a, I get that the thing 
a lot of uh, successful businesses. Oh, I'm so sorry, Chris. We lost your audio. I think it's my fault. Could you? I was trying to make you go to the top of the screen instead. I accidentally muted you. Try again. No sorry. problem. No problem. So in other words, um, sell people what they want, want and yeah. then direct them, them sneakily need. into what they really are going to benefit from. Right. So I've heard it so, described as chocolate covered broccoli. Yes. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's a great one. Anyway, yeah. but so, so here's the thing. Um, so I see position myself in the productivity space. You know, you're a competent solopreneur. You're great. You can do yeah. great stuff. I'm going to help you do it even better. But did you know that being really good at blocking out your time and scheduling your tasks is not the most efficient way to be productive? How's that? Okay, so that is a great example of belief building, which is sort of like part of the middle path as you're moving people towards your promise. Mm. But um, no I want to... Let me give you an example from Sean Blanc because he is in the productivity space. And I mentioned him earlier. His 10X promise is run your full-time business working part-time hours. So he just kind of took all the guesswork out of it. They're like, yes, what he's doing is he's teaching you. He's teaching goal setting. He's teaching visioneering. He's teaching project management. Right. And plus that's he's... a that's a wider scope framework that leaves a lot of room for multiple product offerings and multiple exactly. value value propositions, right? But it has some of the assumptions built into it. You have a full-time business. You mm. want to work less. Yes. Right? So those are implied. Yes. Run your They're full-time implied. business working yes, part-time yes, hours. Yes. But he knows that. His target his target client are full-time agency owners who are overworked and exhausted. And so he can come in, he can implement a few different productivity things. And all of a sudden they're like, wow, I'm running my full-time business working part-time hours. So that's that 10X promise that like, once you say it, you're like, well, that sounds simple. Okay, yeah, it took a long time to come up with that phrase, <laughs> a lot of hard work. Um, but that's a good example, Chris. I would just encourage you to take that as inspiration to look at like, what is your sort of like, you know, think of this as like, some people say that like the five whys, you know, sort of like basically saying like, usually like, sure, sure, sure. Don't use a to-do list. Why? And then just follow that further until you figure out like, what's what does it really matter? And this is where it also helps you narrow down your target client. Right. From my experience, a lot of business coaches, and this is actually a, a conflict that people have. Say, yeah. I need a business coach. I don't need a life coach. But let's face it, coaching for business often yeah. translates down to the personal level. But it you does. can't say that up front as a business coach, right? Exactly. Well, for yeah, me, okay. business, businesses, yeah. I'll take it even further. Uh, and Sharon, you're, not, you're up next, about to get to you. Um, yeah. I'll take it even further and just say, for me, business is theology. I am... Like for me, it's about yeah, yeah. It, like sure. there's a deep theological importance in everything I do in my business, but I don't put that on the sales page. You know, it's like that sort of like it's like under the hood. As you get deeper into learning how to serve people, as you get deeper in learning how to make the world a better place, how to use your unique gifts to become a creator, right? You actually emulate your creator. And so for me, it's theological, but like again, like if I sold that, I don't know. If I put that on the sales page, I'm not sure that would help. <laughs> so right. that's Thank more you of the, so much. That's the broccoli. Yeah. You got it, Chris. And I I will definitely try to schedule a slot. Please do. Grab it before they're gone. Okay. Sharon, you're up next. Thank you. Oh, thanks, John. I have a question. You alluded to yeah. a newsletter. So for yeah. those of us that have had blogs, podcasts, and things like that, what what makes it, and I don't, I know you can just maybe give me a couple of tips. What makes an sure. effective newsletter compared to an ineffective newsletter? What, what, yeah. I'm a little bit confused about that. Oh man, we could go tactical or we could go, um, let me start with, let me start with a couple just big picture ideas here. Um, okay. So the goal of your newsletter is to nurture your target client, to build trust with them, to create right. loyalty. Um, and so I heard one of, somebody mentioned this to me the other day, actually, now I don't know who, no, no, it was uh, Beth. I was, I taught a guest workshop for story brand for Don Miller's group on Friday mm -hmm. and Beth, the host, she mentioned, she was like, everybody, John's newsletter is like Christmas gifts in your inbox twice a week. And I'm like, that's a pretty, I didn't say that. She said that. That's a pretty good standard, I would say. I treat the newsletter like a product. So a lot of people treat the newsletter like like a, like a marketing brochure mm -hmm. where they're like, you see it and you're like, oh, that's cool. That's pretty, but it doesn't give you anything. But I, this, and I, wrote, I wrote a different book on this, Always Be Teaching, which talks about how like every single piece of your marketing by itself needs to be educational, needs to be helpful and useful. Mm -hmm. And that's how I approach a newsletter from a philosophical stance of like, hey, let's make sure it is itself useful. Now, beyond that, I would say a couple tactical things that apply to that, common mistakes people make, is even if you have a blog, send the entire article over email because your goal is you're delivering inbox, you're delivering value to people where they're at. You're not telling them, come sit on my porch and read my article. You're saying, 
I know you're in but your inbox every day. I'm going to give you value right then and there. Mm. I'm going to have you open the email. The subject line is designed to get you to open the email, but then you're just going to scroll through to get to the end of the email because it's so good because it's not saying I wrote a new blog post, click here to go read it elsewhere. It's like, no, it's all the value is right there. Okay. That's a really key tactical thing. Um, and that's something that's shifted because once upon a time, blogs mattered more like the website that your newsletter is on. Um, but the reality is websites just don't matter like they used to. It's more important for you to have a direct connection with your target audience and to be able to say like, I'm delivering this value to you. It's coming to you. Okay. Um, we can so get into way more weeds, but what do you think about that? Yeah. If you're sending a weekly, like I send a weekly uh, um, email yeah. and I include con content that, you know, like I'd like to do marketing tips and things like that. So I'm thinking in my head, you, you've got some really uh, fancy formalized uh, a template maybe or ah yeah okay so your what the content of each email and the structure I do have some templates but that's going to very much depend upon your style in general and your right. um but let me just say this the core of each newsletter is that it needs to either introduce or reinforce a belief okay. there's a book on this that's pretty good that's called simple marketing for smart people that goes into that in more detail but I'll just tell you the Reader's Digest version which is essentially that marketing in today's world is about a series. Yeah, thank you. And that's got the actual book up for demonstration. Thank you, Vanna White. Um, and so the uh, Simple Marketing for Smart People breaks it down with a series of questions for you. But the core idea is that basically there's a lot of beliefs. What are the list of the beliefs that someone has to believe before they become your target client? Okay. And if you can make a list of that, then Tiago Forte, one of the co-authors that, co of that book, he has a Google Doc with 100 beliefs in it. And so he does not create a social media post, a podcast episode, or a newsletter without first saying, which belief or beliefs are we either teaching or introducing? Let me give an example. One of the beliefs that I've mentioned a few times today is that if you want to build a business, if you want to go from one to one to one to many, you need to start with one to few. Mm -hmm. That's a belief. Now, there's a lot of ways. I could write so many different articles about that. I could give examples, testimonials, case studies around that one belief. Um, but I think that every newsletter should either introduce or reinforce a belief. Okay. Okay. So I, I need to get on your newsletter. How do I do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh well, if you book a call with me, um, then you're automatically going to get subscribed, but you can always also go to sell your smarts.co. I'll drop that link in there. Well, that's not a clickable okay. version of that. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if that's uh, you're, I think you're on the sell your smarts newsletter, aren't you Sharon? No, I'm, I get, I get like, uh, I got this email, but I don't think so. Okay. Well, double I check. I'm not getting all your emails for sure. Well, we'll figure that out. Thank, Thank you. you. And Carter, yeah, and Carter made a call out to you. You do get a free Sell Your Smarts crash course when you sign up. That's a daily email for a week that uh, a lot of people give me a lot of great testimonials. That's, I don't just do it for the words of praise. I want it to be like genuinely useful to you. But I want people to go through their free crash course and go like, oh my gosh, this was like, I could have paid for that. And then they're more likely to stay engaged with my newsletter over time. All right, Monica, hello. You're up next. I just clicked a little button. You got to... Click that to unmute. There we go. Sorry about that. Hey, how's it going? Thank you very much for uh, this session. Was really helpful as always. I'm so glad. But my question is, if you're, you know, you're doing your first, first uh, two thousand dollar, how do you build the credibility and the believability if you aren't necessarily there yet? Like you don't have the testimonials. You aren't. Yeah. You, you know, you don't have that yet. Well, you. My favorite success story to start with is your own. So depending on what you're teaching, it does need to be something that you have demonstrated experience with. Um, mm -hmm. Now that can be, I talk about this in the book, always be teaching. There's three different ways you can establish authority online. Um, my favorite is as a Sherpa, which is what I've done in my whole business, which is basically to say like, hey, I climbed this mountain. No, I can teach you how to climb this mountain too. So like, hey, I just earned $10,000 from an online course launch. Can I teach you how to make $10,000 from a course? That kind of thing. Um, the, However, that's not universal. There's plenty of people who have actually built platforms where they're saying, like there's executive coaches, for example, that have not also been CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies and they have still have great businesses. So there are other ways to establish credibility. The two other ones that I think work the best online are as the sage or the struggler. Now the sage has a third party endorsement. So uh, an Olympic athlete, for example, is a sage because they have this third party endorsement, a New York Times bestselling author, someone who won the Nobel Prize in economics, someone who's got a PhD in their field. Those are all examples of these third party endorsements. Um, that allows them to position themselves as a sage. The struggler is one that works out very well. It's kind of like the Sherpa lower down the mountain. Basically, it's sort of like saying like, like a crystal pain uh, money 
it used to be money saving mom and now it's money making mom, but for good reason, I'll explain, uh, or I won't, but regardless, her business started as her saying like, Hey guys, we got $200 this week to feed seven people. I'm going to the store and I'm just sharing detail. Like here's everything we're buying and here's why, and here's my plan, my meal plan and that kind of stuff. I am in the trenches. So people flock to that because they were like, Oh my gosh, she's in the trenches like us. She just like basically the head of the trenches, like, cause she's sharing what she's doing. Um, and she built her business as a struggler, as a fellow struggler. Um, but you have to be careful. Every single one of those three has a dark side. Like for the struggler, it's actually the sappy struggler, which is the one, the person who's posting on Facebook, or other social media platforms about all their problems. And they're going like, you know, like I only have this much to spend on groceries and like nobody has enough to eat. And like, also like, maybe, I don't know, do you guys want to like join my club on how to budget together? You know, it's just like, it's, it's a different thing. So Monica, those are some high level, uh, that's high level training, I suppose, but to make that coaching, do you have follow-up questions or thoughts about how that might apply to your spe specific situation? Um, I think um, I do. I mean, I'm, I'm really working with nonprofit organizations on their strategic planning. And okay, it's, really, it's really a, a growth, like 90% of strategic plans never get implemented. So there's Correct. a lot of yes. room in there to, uh, yeah. you know, really uh, help with that. And I'm trying to, and I, you know, I'm trying to figure out that 10 by offer, which is that, you know, you don't necessarily need to do the old school. You can create a smaller, leaner strategic plan that gets implemented and move forward. And so I'm trying to figure out how, you know, I've done that a little bit, but yeah. And I have related testimonials, but not specific to that because it's a new thing. It's a new product. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. So just to use that as an example, I'm trying to think, I know, and that, do you remember, I know we've had someone else who, who's had a program for nonprofits. Do you remember who off the top of your head that was kind of ancillary or similar to Monica's, but I can't remember the details. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's okay if you don't. I am, no, I'm blanking on that. Okay. Um, the, Annette's been doing this with me for years, uh, which is great because we both now have worked with dozens, hundreds of clients, but it also means sometimes we're just like, I'm like, do you remember? I don't remember. There was somebody we talked to that had a similar program like this. One of the things we talked about was, um, uh, getting clear on like strategic plans. So what, like, what, like, is there, cause there's a lot of different types of strategic plans that a nonprofit might have. There's some element that's typically depending upon what the, um, actual, sorry, I paused because someone entered the waiting room and I think their name's Al, but it just looks like AI entered the waiting room. And I was like, oh no, AI <laughs> is entered the waiting room. What's going to happen next? Uh, uh, um, sorry, I'm going to come back real quick. Um, <laughs> a little dystopian, but um, as long as we keep them in the waiting room, we're fine. Uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Oh yes, under the strategic plan, like what type of impact? It could be engage your volunteers. It could be raise more money. It could be have like, what is the key result? And there's a lot of, and nonprofits is too broad, right? Nonprofits. Right. My first job out of college was actually working full-time for a nonprofit and fundraising. So I understand that like under the nonprofit umbrella, you have like educational nonprofits, religious nonprofits, mm -hmm. um, you know, public benefit. Like there's just, right. I would encourage you to like, just like get, yeah, get a little more specific. Economic Good. development and cultural and humanities. Okay. Like, like museum, museum consortia or, Arts oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So for them, is donations the key? Like, thing yes. they want? yeah. Yeah. So that could mean, like, you know, that could mean that, you, that, that this is just an example, but it could mean that your program that's been about, like, let's help you actually implement your strategic plan instead becomes um, become a donor driven organization. Got you see it. how I'm like, I'm taking that and just saying like, let's take that a few steps down the path of like, what is the identity shift that's happening? So that right. now all of a sudden you have somebody on the board who's saying like, we need to become a donor driven organization and Monica is the one who can help us. You know, like we're trying, I'm, I'm imagining this passion speeches that you want to basically create the words for them so that they can advocate for you. Right. Okay. Does that example help? Yep. It does. Thank you very much. You got it. Awesome. All right. So those of you that are still here. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm happy to, let me just kind of just spark the questions and thoughts by sharing you the, uh, I want to show you that picture of the group coaching model that we went over um, again, one more time. I know. Of this call in terms of how to earn $2,000 a month, group coaching in a minute a week. Um, this is a high level, of course, if you want to go deeper on this, then please book a one-on-one -on -one call with me and I'd be love to talk about this with you. I geek out about this. I've like just kind of fell in love with this way to get income and impact for you and make the world a better place. In the meantime, what questions does this spark for you, right? So if you have a question or if you want to talk through live, here's a group, how do we apply 
a piece of this to what you're doing to help you get what you need to get started, please use the raise your hand emoji icon uh, right here inside of Zoom. And I would love to uh, help you out. So what questions do you have? And you know what? While we wait for questions, Annette, I want to give you a chance to come on the mic. So Annette, as I mentioned, has been teaching with me as like my co-host now for not quite a decade, but six, seven years. Annette, is that right? Um, Gosh, I think we Was first connected back in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so six years ago. So, um, but today's the first time Annette's actually seen this image. She's she's actually seen like all of these things. She knows what every single one of the thing on this uh, means because I've only just recently gone like, Waha, the master plan. Um, but Annette, kind of like, because you've seen people implement this and you know where people get stuck, you know, do you have any particular just kind of like pro tips you want to share with the group? Yeah, there's a difference between your 10x promise and your core promise. And that's that's an important difference Yeah. Um, that, that you want to take a look at. And um, also, John, if, maybe if you could talk about the concept of invisible leads. Yeah. Oh man. There's so much to cut. Yes. Invisible leads. Um, okay. So visible leads, core promise. And then Ed also asked if I could just recap or the nutshell version of this happy to. Um, so let me start with the nutshell version. And then Annette, if you could just make a note in those two things, uh, core promise versus 10 X promise and invisible leads, I can come back to those. Um, so let's do a high level overview of this. Um, if you missed the beginning of the call, that's okay. But I did kind of, we started with a blank page and we kind of built out this whole thing. So if you think about this, starting with the middle, kind of moving outwards, basically, Here's a summer version. To get the gold, you got to use the blues to go from red to green. That's kind of the whole idea. So the gold here is the goal at the end of this. The gold medal, which is good timing, I guess, with the Olympics. Earn $10,000 a month, group coaching 90 minutes a week. That's what we want. How do we do that? Well, first, there's three things that are typically keeping people stuck, keeping people from achieving this. There's typically, they've got a tiny audience, there's scattered selling, and overwhelming ideas. Some combination of all three of those is typically present. Could be all three. So how do we do that or replace that? Well, we're going to need to go from having a tiny audience to having loyal leads. Now, how do we do that? We have we have a really strategic newsletter, workshop, and referral system in place that gets loyal leads. Notice I didn't say limitless leads, even though I thought about it because it sounds really clever and like kind of digital marketing. Um, we don't need limitless leads. You don't need a huge audience. Uh, my most successful client, Dustin Reekman, um, he's now crossed the million dollar mark from group coaching alone. Last year, he earned $505,000 from 670 email subscribers. 505,670 email subscribers. This kind of defies, if you know anything about digital marketing or just like the world we live in, like with like how big your list needs to be, it kind of defies the math that most products require because you don't need a huge audience to be successful with this. I have clients who generate sales who have no email list um, and they just, create a list of people that they can help and they work with that. So how do you do that with those three things? Same idea over here to, from, to go from scattered selling to uh, apparently erasing things to go from scattered selling to simple sales. You need three things, a 10 X promise you need hand raisers and you need serve calls. I can answer questions about any of those, but that's the high level idea. And then again, to from go to go from overwhelming ideas, ideas that overwhelm you and overwhelm your clients to go to a powerful program you need three things. You need milestones, you need map, you need a mastermind. Now, when someone asked about earlier in the chat, they just said, what's mastermind? We didn't go to that too much detail. I'll just answer that real quick and say, the core idea here is that people sign up for your group coaching program because of you, but they typically stay and potentially even become part of an ongoing program because of the peer group, because positive peer pressure is a perk. It's a priceless perk. If we're going to throw another P in there, positive peer pressure is a priceless perk. Um, and so that's a core, that's kind of the big idea. So that's a, that is a high level nutshell overview, but I'm happy to answer, um, any questions about that. And yes, I will share the recording. I see Sandra, you asked about that. Um, and glad so many of you are, <laughs> uh, booking calls with me. Happy to talk. And she said, breaking my brain a little to not focus on list building or driving massive traffic. I know this is very counter, counter everything, right? Um, but what I've just found, and if you read any of my books, you'll find this is a common theme. What I find is that like, most of like the status quo of what you should do, most of it is a really noisy distraction. And so we're getting to is we're just pulling all that away and just saying like what actually drives results. And if you want to, once you're earning $10,000 a month, you're coaching 90 minutes per week. Now, if you want to go make tens of thousands of subscribers, go do that. That's great. Go do that. But now you're doing it from a place of security instead of wondering how you're going to pay the bills or 
uh, when your next photo one client coming in. So you want you to be, I care about your family. I've got four kids. I cannot afford to go out and just like hustle and grind and just hope I make a bunch of followers and make a bunch of money. I need a simple way that's strategic and it works. So that's why, that's where this model was actually originally born. So Brandon, I see you got your hand up. Happy to answer your question. Annette, keep your question, your questions in the backlog. Don't let me forget about those. What can I do for you, Brandon? So thank you, John, for all this. This has been very helpful. Um, you got it. To drill down a little bit on the simple sales and just the serve calls, yeah. I need to get your book. Uh, so I need to do that. But as yeah. far as like closing the sale, you mentioned a uh, very much, um, it makes a lot of sense on the sales page and why that's not as much like as important, but is there a point in which you introduce a sales page or even like a summary, yeah. or is it just like more of a checkout that has a brief summary of what they're, what they're buying? I'll tell you a secret, Brandon, in front of a live audience on a reported call. Under each one of these, these three blues, there's a lot of big parts. The, the, the simplest version of this is just that you learn how to do the call. And then yes, you can close it on the call and you don't need any of the other stuff. But what we typically start doing is once you start getting this underway, is I typically recommend that we start building out more things. Now we build onto your system once you're already selling. We don't try to like create a complicated create a system and then go sell. It's like once you're already selling, then one of those things which we add on is called a pitch deck. And another is a deposit link. So typically what happens in like a surf call is at the end of the call, if they're interested and they say, yes, I'm in, your goal here is to give them just enough information to make a decision and no more. Because when you give someone too much information, you actually introduce objections. So I said, hey, I have this great program starting next month that's going to help you earn $10,000 a month, go coach you 90 minutes a week. I didn't tell you in today's call. I mean, we're not going straight to a sale. I'm actually saying you have to talk to me first because I want to make sure you're a good fit. But if you wanted to join, what I, I haven't said, the exact day of the week, the date or the time that it starts because honestly, those are very much like not the reason why you should join or not join the program. Like those are very like, there's a lot of ways to get around that. But if you, the more information you give someone, the more reasons you give them to potentially talk themselves out of it. So on a surf call, when someone says, yes, I'm in, they might have a question. They'd say, when does it start? You're like, it's September 12th. They're like, you want to join? They're like, yes. Then you say, awesome. Here's a link to go and pay a deposit and save your seat. Okay. So that's the first yes. Sometimes people say, I need to think about it. I need more time or I need to talk it over with my spouse or a business partner. That's very common. In which case you say, awesome. Well, I encourage you to <laughs> think about it and talk it up with your spouse. I mean, it's a big deal if you got to decide if you're ready to earn $10,000 a month group coaching 90 minutes a week. So you bring it back to the promise. You always end the call with a promise. What you don't want them to go is they're walking away thinking, okay, the decision I have to make is, am I ready to spend $2,000? No, the decision they have to make is, are they ready to earn $10,000 a month group coaching 90 minutes a week, right? It's the promise. You want to emphasize that. And then you say like, well, I'll just send you, I'll send you an overview of the program. And then you send the pitch deck. The pitch deck is two slides of basic information and then as many slides as you can of testimonials. Internally, we often call it the, the sell your spouse deck because that's usually what it's used for is like the spouse was not on the call and they're like, I want to join, especially when you get to higher price points. I have clients who charge as much as $30,000 for their program. Um, that's a very carefully thought through decision. And so... In my case, one of the things you'll find in my pitch deck is, surprise, I have a 100% ROI guarantee. And for most spouses, that's all they need to hear. And they're like, oh, so this guy will keep coaching with you until you earn back at least what you invested. Actually, I'm about to announce that it's now becoming a double your money guarantee, that you will earn back twice what you invest, or we'll keep coaching you for free until you do. Sorry, Annette, that's a surprise to you too, but we're doing it. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> like that's one of the things in the pitch deck. It's like, oh my gosh, the spouse is like, are you kidding me? Go ahead, sign up. And so the pitch deck is designed to fill the void of, this, of a sales page. Um, but even then it's strategic and what you cover in there. So every single one of these things has like another level of depth um, into it, but for not to, for not to overwhelm the whole screen with detail here, because obviously it's a pretty high level overview today, but Brandon, what, what does that answer your question? Do you have follow-up questions to that? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I, I come from a world of selling a lot of online courses and, yeah. and digital products. So sales pages and like, that's my norm, but I've recently got into one-on-one -on -one coaching and I want to la launch a group coaching program. So it, yes. I've recognized like, it's just a different way of going about things. And I'm actually really excited because I'm more of a, a people person. And yeah. so being able to spend face to face, even if it's through a screen is, is exciting too. So yeah, uh, no, I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I'm just, I'm all about, I just, I never want to lo lose the humanity of what we do online because it's so easy to do. I mean, I'll be, I've been in meetings so many times with people they're talking about, they're like, okay, we only got 
7,000 opt-ins or we've only got 50,000 subscribers or, you know, we need 10,000 followers on LinkedIn. I'm like, guys, let's pause for a second. Can you imagine the size of that audience? Like in a stadium, like that's just, that's massive. And we just like take it for granted. And so even a small audience, my first online course, I had 257 email subscribers. And I remember thinking through for that first course launch, this was in 2015. I remember just like being dejected because a coach had told me you need 10,000 subscribers to sell a course. And I was like, well, that sucks. And then I thought more about it. And I was like, wait a minute, what 257 people in a room? That's, that's an audience. Like I'm on stage. Like I got to perform. And that's what shifted my perspective. I just gave a whole talk on that at Craft and Commerce in more detail, but uh, which is ConvertKit's conference. Um, but yes, so the serve calls, keep it human. I mean, I've talked, I've, I've worked with clients before who they've actually been doing this for years. They've sold courses, memberships, and they can't just figure out something's not selling. They can't really figure out why. And even if they don't have a good coaching model, we'll add on serve calls where they're periodically meeting one-on-one with a handful of people from their audience. And it it's designed to be just like such a point of connection that it humanizes your entire audience. So one, pardon me. I believe one of the reasons why my newsletter is so good and re people regularly tell me that it's one of their one or two favorite newsletters that they've ever subscribed to. I think honestly, it's because I regularly spend time on serve calls. So I know many of my subscribers by name. And so when I'm responding to Susan and she's like, thanks for, thank you for making me feel like a human. And I'm like, you got it, Susan. I'm so, I'm just, I'm happy to do that for you. It's, be it's also because like we've met in person, like we've talked, we've talked on calls. And so it's like, there's a real human connection there. Um, so I think social media steals a lot of that humanity from us. Um, yes, and there was a question about the book about beliefs. It doesn't get into newsletters. Okay, so there's lots of questions about books. So let me actually just th throw a couple of links in here. Um, actually, I'm, I'm not going to, I won't type and talk. I'll, Annette, if you'll drop the links in. Uh, or you, can, you know what? Y'all know the link. It's amazon.com, right? That's the link where all the books are. So I'll just tell you the names of the books. And Annette, if you'll type these in. So I wrote a book called Surf to Sell. Um, which is about exactly how to sell premium programs with one free coaching call. It's new. It just came out in June. It's been a number one bestseller two months in a row. Um, it hasn't hit number one for August yet, but August just started. Give us a minute. Um, my other book that I mentioned earlier is called Always Be Teaching. It's also by me. I've written three books, but Always Be Teaching is also about um, how to really how to build, how to teach in your marketing, like how to build a newsletter, how to build uh, a business that's built on teaching and not just selling that genuinely makes the world a better place. I also referenced books by a couple other people. So I mentioned Simple Marketing for Smart People by Billy Broaz with Tiago Forte. Uh, great book. I'll tell you this as a disclaimer. It's about two or three times as long as it needs to be. A lot of business books are that way, right? Like you read it and you're like, like there's a really, really good core idea and then they keep, they keep talking. Um, so the book is still good though. It's still worth it. But if you find yourself going, wait a minute, I feel like I just read that twice. It's because you did. Uh, and then the third book uh, that I mentioned earlier, what was the other book I mentioned? Um, there was another one, wasn't it? Maybe not. Maybe that's it. I read a lot of books though. And I like those books. Um, okay. What are the questions you all have? Happy to stick around and help you. Uh, we've gone 30 minutes over time, which is totally fine with me because that meeting canceled and here I am. Uh, I canceled one meeting. Someone else canceled another one. Um, I love that. Susan, she said, oh, I always enjoy your emails and learn so much. So grateful, John, for your kind, helpful expertise that moves us forward to success and grateful for Annette's helpful presence. I love that. Thank you. And Susan, I appreciate you sharing that. That's amazing. Um, words of affirmation is definitely a top level language for me. So I'm not going to say I don't care about the word the I really do. But so I do this, I don't know, I feel like it's not a love language, but seeing my clients get results is the ultimate love language. So it's like, yes, say nice things, but even better, go do big things and then report back about it. Um, Cause that's what I get excited about. And thank you, Annette. I'm glad you've learned to adapt and roll with things on the fly. Um, yeah. So what other questions do you have? Or are you just, if you're just saving your questions for our one-on-one, -on -one, that's okay by me. Chris just bought serve to sell. Amazing. I hope you find that super helpful. And thank you, Chris. Chris just dropped a screenshot of that uh the model the group coaching model here uh, so we can so anybody can you can you could download that if you want a copy of that um it is <laughs> yeah i don't have to i'm gonna have to i actually if you follow my newsletter you'll know usually i share things that are like super beautifully illustrated and designed and if you watch me sketch this out you might have figured out that actually i pay an illustrator um because if you see me live illustrate is not no one, you know it's not up there but you get the idea uh and then i will go back and pay my illustrator to make a more prettier version of that for the future Oh, Aisha, I'm glad to hear you found me by way of Mike P. So Mike Pacquion, uh is uh, honestly 
an amazing human, just period. Uh, he's one of the good guys of the internet. And he's also a great client. And his, so just to give you an example of another 10X promise, the promise for his program is create an unforgettable signature talk that earns you instant trust with any audience. Yeah, Ed, I see your reaction to that. You're like, dang, his program used to be called Speech Club. I think it's still called Speech Club, but that used to be how he sold it, by the way, is he was just like, join Speech Club. And he's like, I don't know why it's not selling. And I was like, because well, what is Speech Club? So then we changed that. We came up with that 10X promise and he was speaking at an event. He was speaking at Craft and Commerce last year. So I had him change one slide of his talk. He's a speaking coach. He knows what to do on stage. But I had him change one slide just to say, it was his bio. So he's like, hey, I'm Mac Pacione. I help speakers, or not, I, don't, I think he said creators. I help creators to create an unforgettable signature talk that earns them instant trust with any audience. And then he just kept going through the presentation. He sold out his group coaching program from that one stage. Because everybody was like, I want that. It's so clear. So Ed, you're up next. I'm glad you joined. I'm Yo, glad so glad to be here. Man, thanks for going long. I came it's late, so this is yeah. perfect. <laughs> it works out pretty well. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's that email that people were talking about? The was it the Can you help me email? Ah, uh, the who do you know? Yeah, the who do you know email? Um, yeah, I can show, I can show that real quick. So I've got. So you saw on that diagram that model that needs a needs a really cool name, but doesn't have that yet. But that kind of multifaceted image. Um, one of the things on there is hand raisers. Right. The core idea of a hand raiser is there an email that's designed not to get a click, but to get a reply, and specifically to get a reply from your target client. Um, and so, so Ed, nice. if you look back at the email that got you to come today, it was a hand raiser. True that. So, okay. I get it. Yeah. I get it. So, so, Very so nice. well played. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's it. yeah. Yeah. So you can look back at your, your history. Um, so the, who do you know? Actually, I still have them not. There's one of the, there's many, I have a whole library, uh, of my sold out swipe file is what I call it. Um, of all these hand raisers. Here's one example, which is the who do you know email. This, I originally got a version of this from a Rich Letton's book, The Prosperous Coach. Oh. Y'all, I don't have a book club because I read a book a week and it just it just be would just be insane. Like I just reference books all the time. Please don't feel like you have to read everything that I referenced. But here's another book. It's called The Prosperous Coach by Rich Litman. It's another great book. But one of the examples he have in, has in here is this, which I call the Houdino email. I've modified it a bit, but basically it's it's positioned as a low pressure referral email of saying like, hey, do you know one like this? After aspirational backstory. I have opened up some space in my calendar for complimentary coaching and I like to serve someone specific who criteria, criteria desires, wow. you know, like that. But here's what it looks like. After phasing out all my one-on-one clients, I've opened up space in my calendar for complimentary coaching and I like to serve someone specific who has worked in the same industry for 10 plus years, has capped out wow. with a full client letter on their income ceiling and would be interested in building a group coaching program based on their experience. Do you know one like that? Well, guess what? You can see Jamie here was like, that's me. That's honestly the most common <laughs> response. Sometimes people that's will great. be like, oh yeah, let me introduce you to Jeff. Um, but it's, it works great. You can use that in one-on-one texts, emails, DMs. It's super flexible. It will get a dramatically lower response rate than the one to 10X email, but it's more flexible because this one basically just works if you have like a list of subscribers where you just say like, hey, would you be interested in working with me to me to 10X promise? So for Mike Pacquion, hey, would you be interested in working with me to create an unforgettable signature talk that earns you instant trust with any audience? That's the whole email. Wow. Yeah. That is where this, this one email, I would say, obviously this, 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 this is also a great way to test promises, by the way, if you're still working through your 10X promise is you can send an email like this mm, with your 10X smart. promise. Yeah. And then based on what kind of responses you get, try a different promise. Um, so I changed my promise many, many times, not dramatically. It's not like I went from earn $10,000 a month to push 90 minutes a week to like lose 20 pounds. Like I'm still in the same category. It's just like slight edits, but I've done right. that many, many times. Yeah. So Ed, what follow-up questions do you have to that? My gosh. Uh, yeah. How did you come up with the promise? I feel like I, I really should just watch the recording, but like, what's <laughs> your okay. process for coming up with a promise like that? Because that's fire. I, I yeah, love that no, actually, that we didn't with. get into a lot in detail before now. So you're good. You're asking a great question for me to dive into. Sweet. Um, it's, there's different ways to come at it. My, so if you read the books, uh, Surf to Sell, or if you just like dive into a general, like anything I teach, well, you actually, Ed, you were at the Surf Call training I did on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm working on Surf to Sell. It's great so far. Oh, good. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. So two of the things, two of the steps are results and roadblocks in the Surf Call process. Your 10X promise is usually basic, basically it's built off of get result without roadblock. Now that's like, so usually one of the first exercises we'll do is we'll just like make a list of like, what are results that matter to your target client? 
And what are roadblocks that matter? Now, once you start doing surf calls, you actually get to like compare that to what they're saying. Because there might it might actually be that you were right, but you were using the wrong words. So for example, oh. for a long time, I was saying like, uh, build a six-figure flagship program. That was like my 10X promise at first. And then in surf calls with people, six figures never came up as a goal. But when I was diving into like what matters to you, the number that came up over and over and over again was someone who I was like, I can help them. Like, and I was like, they're my target client. The number that came up over and over again, and I was like, what's your most important goal right now? They're like, man, if I can make $10,000 a month from this, then, and what came after that was different. For some people, it was like, I could retire my spouse. I could quit my day job. Um, I could fire my most annoying one-on-one client. Like there's a lot of reasons, but $10,000 a month came up over and over again. And so I was like, okay, well, six figures a year, $10,000 a month. There's not a lot of difference between that. You know, there's $1,600 a month difference basically is what it comes out to. And instead I was just like, okay, well, let's just change it. So when I changed it to saying earn $10,000 a month, dramatic improvement in responses of people being like, yes, I want that. One of the things I think is also, it made it more believable because for someone who's never made money from group coaching, $100,000 sounds crazy. But $10,000 is like, okay, maybe I could do that. Let me learn more. But actually, if you do $10,000 a month times 10, that's $100,000. <laughs> more believable though. More Exactly. Believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it starts with just making, doing the exercise on your own to create a draft of results and roadblocks. And then it comes out of surf calls is how you refine it, um, uh, is, surf, is the surf calls from people you're talking to. Um, for example, one of the biggest objectives, my, my best target clients, my best target clients, are, their time is already valuable right? They're already super busy with one-on-one clients or they have a full-time job or they have some sort of career. And so time is a really key re resource. And so just saying earn $10,000 a month doesn't capture the full picture. Because hmm. someone who is like unemployed or fresh out of college or just oh, like yeah. has an abundance of free time, there's probably other things they need to figure out before they're ready to have a group coaching program, candidly. Now that's a broad that's, that's a broad description, right? Like I'm, just, I'm saying that very broadly, that in broad strokes, that might not be true for everybody, but it's true for many people. So then saying 90 minutes per week did two things. One, it made it, it just put everything I teach inside of like a, inside of a frame. So that's like, it's like, if you imagine like art on the wall could technically be a mural and just stretch everywhere, but putting it in a frame gives it context. And so the 90 minutes per week gives my 10K per month context. But it also helps me clarify what I teach. Because now I'm not going to teach you. There's a, one, there's a bunch of different ways you can do group coaching programs. But I'm not going to teach you the ones that require more than 90 minutes a week. So it actually helps me as a teacher. Because I can narrow my focus and go deeper. That's excellent. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Ed. Great question. No, thank you. You got it. Erwin, you had another question? What can I do for you? I think my, big, my biggest disconnect is trying to establish an email list. Yeah. Like, how do you just... I don't have a ton of friends and maybe a few of them, actually a few of them actually made it, asked me to start this, this particular podcast. Okay. Cause they kind of see my relationships and they kind of, you should tell people, you should teach people this, but how yeah. do I actually start, get an email list, generate an email list? Well, focus on getting loyal leads more than focused on getting an email list. So if we, if we go back to the framework um, for what to actually like, like the, the there's the newsletter, the workshop and referrals on loyal leads. A newsletter is super valuable even if you have one subscriber for them. Now, the way that I teach newsletters is actually, man, I got to figure out like how deep I want to go into this. Not because I have secrets, but just because like I'm super nerdy and it can get really overwhelming <laughs> really quickly. Um, but the way my newsletter is designed is it's actually an automation. It's an asset. So anytime you subscribe, you get issue one of my newsletter and then you get issue two and then you get issue three, even though I'm writing issue, I don't know, really far down the way, ways. And so what that means is if you, if someone subscribes, when I'm writing that newsletter and I only had a handful of subscribers, I'm writing it as if I had a much larger audience so that it, be, so that now this crash course that I wrote over a year ago, people are in the comments saying like, oh my gosh, this was so useful to me because it's automated. It's an asset. Um, so that's how I create that's how I, that's why I approach newsletter writing. So all that to say, you can probably start with what, uh, with what Brian Harris calls your eager sneezers, which are who are those people that like, no matter what you do, they're just like, they can't, it's like a sneeze. They can't help but talk about it. Like, obviously the most obvious answer to this is probably like your mom or your dad or like your best friend or your spouse. Like who are the people that are just like going to talk about what you do? They may not be your target client, but that's okay. 
when you start a newsletter, you reach out to people, you know, and you say like, Hey, like I'm start, I'm starting like, for example, when it comes to like relationships for you to just to say like, Hey, I'm starting a newsletter about this thing. Would you like to follow along? And they're like, yes. You're like, awesome. What's your best email done? They're subscribed. That's, that's typically how you get your first hundred subscribers kind of no matter who you are. Um, and then after that, it becomes probably creating a free workshop and then sharing that with people who already have an audience. Like if you already have a podcast, then that's a great way to just reach out to other podcast hosts and just like interview swap and, and final and promote a free workshop. And then you can get, I mean, like Mike Pacquiao, who I mentioned earlier, he was on one podcast this year that got him over 500 new email subscribers in that one show. Now that's like an outsized kind of like, that's a lot of subscribers. I would say most shows don't get you that many, but it's possible. Carta, I'm so glad this was helpful. Thank you for the kind words. And I know people have been dropping off and I'm not offended by that. When you got to go, you go, you got stuff to do. My meeting canceled. I got nothing to do right now, except for be here and support you. So I'm happy to be here and help you out however I can. This is why I do what I do. So, um, yes. Uh, did I, Erwin, did I answer your question? You're off screen now. So I hope so. Um, Brandon said, just purchased her to sell. Got to go. Looking for the one-on-one later this week. Awesome. Love that. Debbie, I see your real life hand up. So I'll just, it's okay. You don't have to search for the emoji hand. I'll just bring you on for real life. Sometimes some okay. versions of Zoom will do that. Like if I hold my hand up long enough, it'll automatically, here it goes. It's about to do yeah. it. It'll like I automatically put it up. I couldn't find the hand raised. I know. But yeah. so I was like, I knew it would do that if I raised my hand. Um, so I have a couple of questions. One, yeah. do you have a recommendation for software to use for group coaching? I use Kajabi now, but I've never yeah. done group coaching with it. Um, um, I probably Zoom. Zoom? Well, I mean, I mean to collaborate, to give resources, yeah. um, just note taking. Um, I've heard really good things about a, a coachable, coach accountable, I think is the name of it. Yeah, I do, so I do have recommendations. I oh, Trust me. I always have opinions, so I'm happy to share them. Um, uh, uh, ask any one of my younger siblings. I've always had opinions, and I always will. But uh, I'm a redhead. But I also it comes naturally. <laughs> oh, that's great. I've got a my youngest son's a redhead. We're learning. Um, but uh, the so software does not matter that much. I just want to say that because I actually I do know people that have really successful programs where it's literally just a calendar invite with a Zoom link every week, and that's it. Like that's the whole program and that's impressive. Now I do think there is value in creating a community beyond that. I, my, my, I currently use circle. Um, I've also seen some programs use mighty networks really well. So I would probably start there. Kajabi is a great and it, it's a great course platform and it's pretty bad at everything else. Um, especially community. It's just not good at community period. Uh, Kajabi kind of brands himself as like a word, the, like the, anything every time somebody's like an all in one, I'm just like, eh, you're probably, it's probably not great at anything, which is true for Kajabi, unfortunately. All that to say, today's technology, all of these apps do 80% of the same thing. We're just talking about that last 20%. And so you could pick any of these, even that one I haven't heard of. It's called like Coachable or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one called Clarity Flow that's really great um, that I've used in the past. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, I would probably personally start with Circle or Mighty Networks. Um, because that's what I've done and that's what I've seen to be successful. I have clients who just use Slack. Like if you're, it's like, what are you already using? It's also a question. Like if you already have like Slack or used to that, can you open just a Slack channel for your community and then just have like Zoom links or Microsoft team or Google, uh, you now thing? For everything. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Do I still use Notion? Susan says that. Yes, but I don't use Notion. I use Notion all the time, but I don't use Notion for like community. I use it more like my version of like Microsoft Word or Google Docs where I have like all my notes. I have lots of templates. I create a lot of times when I'm teaching in my program, I'll teach, I'll use like Notion templates so I can create like a whole pipeline for like how to manage your sales process and like share that in Notion. Um, so yes, I do use Notion. And Annette says I'm a Notion power user. Thank you, Annette. I will take that as a compliment. And then um, is, is there yeah. a difference in your core promise and your 10X promise? Thank you, Debbie. You're bringing us right back to what Annette said earlier I should talk about. I love that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, there is. Yes, there is. Can you elaborate? Yo, you want to yeah, I'll elaborate. <laughs> I'll elaborate, sure. Um, yeah, so, okay, so, in your, so the way I think about it is that your entire online education business is built on promises. It's like every product is just a promise for a price. In fact, this book has a promise right on the cover. 
exactly how to sell premium programs with one free coaching call. That's the promise. You don't buy this book because it's 100 pages of black and white paper with some fancy illustrations in it. That's not why you buy it. You buy it because of the promise. That's true for all, all online education products. Um, it's especially important when you're selling a premium program, right? Because if you're buying a book, you may not even care that much about the promise because you're like, that's yeah, like 10 bucks. You know, like, but when you're buying something that's two or five or 10 or $30,000, it matters. Um, so that's why the 10X promise is so key. I call it a 10X promise because it's, I'm, I want to that to be a brain exercise. It does not mean it has to be like the math of like 10 times. It's more about saying, how can we help someone become a different version of themselves of who they are right now? It's also meant to contrast with uh, a gateway product. So a gateway product would be like a lower price course or a book or even a paid workshop. Gateway products are great for creating clients, but they're not great for creating cash. I joked earlier about like making like the three bucks out of whatever I make from books. I love that you're buying my books. Please buy my books. But what I do is every dollar I make from books, I put back into book marketing to sell more books because books create clients for me. I don't make money. I don't keep money from the book itself. Um, so all that to say the promise of a gateway product needs to be a 10% promise, something that's incremental change. If I was selling a fitness program, this is the difference between saying lose five pounds in five days, which is a 10% promise, an incremental promise, versus get rock hard apps, which is a 10x promise. It's a different version of yourself. You're like, I can't, wow, that's a big identity change. That's the difference between a 10% promise and a 10x promise. Um, the core promise is the umbrella promise for everything you do. So the core promise is basically like, who are you and who do you help? So for me, I help creators sell your smarts without selling your soul. That's what I do. I help you sell your smarts without selling your soul. That is true. It is compelling. It's clever. But it's also not specific enough to sell a specific product. So the core promise is the umbrella. And then my 10x promise and my 10% promises all fit underneath that umbrella. So that's one of the things we, we definitely focus on your 10x promise in my program working with me. But by necessity, we have to also figure out your core promise if you have any other products or services. Um, but it becomes a really helpful exercise. I've had people who've been selling courses for years suddenly go like, well, what is the promise of my thing? And they'll go back and start rewriting the sales page and just put that big and bold at the top. And it once they figure out what the promise is, um, and it changes sales dramatically for the better. Um, I heard someone or Al uh, asked about school. I say school because it's K with a K. So I assume you have to pronounce it weird, just like it's spelled weird. Uh, it's fine. I would say that it's sort of like a more disorganized version of Mighty Networks but it's not as closely to circle. It is popular, but it's not like, but like, here's the thing. I've heard the hype about school. People are like, oh, this is the app that's gonna finally do it. It's gonna like change the whole like online education space. It's like, that's not really how this works. This is just about humans helping humans and the software just helps us do the job. If you wanna use school, that's fine. Do that, even though it's spelled wrong. Um, if you wanna use Circle or Mighty, do that. Uh, if you wanna use a Facebook group, why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to yourself? Um, but I won't judge you. I'll try really hard not to. So I hope that answers your question or at least gives you some food for thought. Um, I think we're going to call it in just a minute. So I'm going to give a final call for two things, questions and takeaways. Oh, and that's going to remind me about to talk about invisible leads. Aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. I'll talk about that. Um, but before you leave, I would love it if you would share your takeaway in the chat. I asked this like an hour ago, but I'm sure there's, I hope there's other takeaways since then. So if you would share your most useful takeaway from today in the chat, that'd be super useful to me and hopefully to you and the other people in the group as well. And then I will share about, and, and no, and then I will ask Annette to come on and she is going to teach us what to do if you're trying to serve invisible leads. How do you think about that, Annette? No pressure. <laughs> A little bit of pressure. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I'd love for you to share. I think, the, I think your workshop example is like, my kind of my go-to for mm -hmm. teaching invisible leads. So I'd love to um, do that. So Annette, why don't you t first tell us um, what is an invisible versus a visible lead? So an invisible lead is one that isn't like right out there. In the, it's not going to be listed, you know, on their profile in LinkedIn or on Facebook or something like that. But there's an issue that they have that you're there to help them solve. But you don't know that just by looking at them. So they're sort yeah. of invisible. So you have to have a way for them to make themselves known to you. Yeah. You know, so. So can you give your target it. client, can you give your target client as an example? 
Yes. My target client is Christian businesswomen who have experienced narcissistic abuse. Mm -hmm. So you can see why they are yeah. invisible leads. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, that's no, not something most, you put on your profile. It's not your Instagram bio. It's like, you know, you know, divorce a narcissist. It's not usually in your Instagram bio. If it is actually in your Instagram bio, that might actually be a red flag. Like, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. But yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, my ex was a narcissist. Um, but so Annette had this problem where that like her program, that's what her program was based on. You know, she's got her own group coaching program and was trying to figure out like, Hey, well, look, how do we find these women? Like she was getting people from referrals from, uh, some people who are on her email list or past clients, like where this was a pattern that was showing up, but how do you go find them? And so Annette created a workshop. So Annette, can you share, do you remember off the top of your head, any the title or the promise of your workshop? Yeah, I just redid it. Um, and now it's called make it make sense. And, um, but it was called originally, um, what did I call it originally? It was based on my narc encounter spectrum. It was um, uh, something like, are they secretly a narcissist or something like that? Um, something about not being duped by a oh, mass yeah. narcissist yeah, like, or yeah. something. Yeah. Right. Like how not to get duped by a mass narcissist. That's not yeah. the exact copy, everybody, but you get right, the general right. idea. Yeah. It's a free workshop that she shared on social media mm -hmm. and elsewhere to say like, hey, I'm using this free workshop and like, and how to, how to not get due by a mass narcissist. And part of that is that Annette has this narc encounter spectrum that gives you a very clear metric of like, when you're, if you think someone might be, if you think someone might be a narcissist, okay, well, what, what are they exhibiting? And there's different types of narcissists and who, where, where are you in the danger zone? Where like run and where are you just like, okay, you probably just need therapy. Like there's something, you know, there's mm -hmm. some minor issues going on over here. So Annette, can you share real quick some of the results you got from that first workshop in terms of like, and like mainly finding invisible leads, which was the goal. Right. Right. So I had already, um, my list had been like on leadership and team development, you know, mm -hmm. in the past, which John had challenged me that that's kind of broad and vague. And he was right. And I was like quietly working with these women behind the scenes on these issues. And so he, he challenged me and said, why don't you just like give it two years, go all in for two years on this. And uh, it took me months of him just like poking me with that for a little bit. And I finally did. And I was really surprised because when I boldly put that out there and I wasn't even paying attention to the dates, it was like right before it was like the day after Memorial Day that was when I went live with it. And I put it out there like last minute and I had like 50 people sign up for it. Yeah. Right off Amazing. the bat. And then I just, leads. Yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I just, uh, I taught through this thing and right on the call, just like John's doing here, I offered them a gift was, which was to spend some one-on-one -on -one time and we'll have a coaching conversation. And I had every one of those women got on the call with me with tears running down their face because they felt like finally someone understands. And they just thanked me over and over and over for that call. And then I, you know, wow. wound up having some of them in my group. That's great. And I thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. See, that was much better. You sharing that example than me teaching it academically because you've got the street smarts for going after invisible leads as well. So I love that. Thank you so much. I'm going to read through some of these takeaways that were shared in here that we're going to wrap up for today. Um, I love that. Let's see. Uh, Ed said so much good stuff. Thank you. But I love your three-step overview of how to make the powerful program. Amazing. The diagram is so smart and well laid out. Thank you. Um, Susan said the newsletter format and the difference between core and 10X and 10% promise. Amazing. Glad that's helpful. Uh, Brian said, always show up even if you forgot the time and showed up late. <laughs> that's, there you go. Love that. That is a great takeaway. Uh, but most useful is seeing myself as someone with scattered selling and overwhelming ideas. Good. I mean, not good that you have scattered selling and overwhelming ideas, but you know, the first step to solving a problem is awareness. I think there's, there's like a famous quote in there somewhere. Um, everyone said, my biggest takeaway is finding complimentary influencers for referrals. Love that. Uh, and also going from scattered sales to simple sales and then using newsletters as a loyal leads generator. Love that. One quick tip about that with newsletters, with a lot of things people get wrong. Um, a lot of times people write emails as if they're writing to a crowd. So like, I, this is a tension I want you to hold in your head. Even if you only have 100 subscribers, that's 100 human beings. Amazing. That's incredible. And they don't read it all at once together looking at a giant projector screen. So don't write, hey, guys, hey, gals, hey, everyone. They read it alone, individually, on their cell phone, on the toilet. And so you are talking to one person, right? And so like, so write it to one person. And that's how you're going to actually, good people go like, wow, it's like he's talking to me. Um, maybe don't mention to them that you know they're on the toilet. That's just creepy. But uh, 
Debbie said, I have so many ideas now. Thank you. Amazing. And Ed said, actually building a two slide right slide deck right now to send to a client. Amazing. The pitch deck to sell the, the sell your spouse deck. Yeah. The pitch deck to sell the wife. Amazing. Debbie says, working on my 10x promise and amazing. Love that. So awesome. <laughs> Ed said, sorry, I did not need that image. It's accurate though. Um, so new talk, talk away. To, yeah, there you go. Sandra just added one. New takeaway. Talk to one person in a massive email. Amazing. It's I think of it as email marketing today is one-to-one -one relationships at scale. Because when you post on social media, everyone knows you're posting to like a crowded room of like thousands of people. But when someone's in their inbox, it's private, it's personal. And so write it as if it was. All right, that's all for today. Keep up the good work and I hope we'll talk soon.